NC, uh, led by the uh, Recording in progress. Thank you very much and uh, greetings to the team uh, support staff of the portfolio committee. We welcome you and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, honorable members, uh, as Nelly Swa had said that the chairperson is attending a meeting of uh, the chairpersons for all the portfolio committees. It started yesterday and is ending today. So unfortunately she is unable to join the meeting. Uh, before we kickstart the meeting, honorable members, we do understand um, and appreciate uh, the work that has uh, gone into the um, uh, uh, reports that we have been presented. Uh, we did have an outstanding matter. So this is a follow-up meeting because uh, this week has been dedicated to oversight visit, but by portfolio committees, but we will not be as this portfolio committee conducting oversight. Therefore, we had requested that we finish off uh, on the meeting that uh, we, we had on the, in fact, get a report on the outstanding matters uh, of the National Youth Development Agency on the report, which was submitted to us on quarter two and quarter three. Um, specifically to uh, the one relating to the work of the board members. So that is why this meeting has been convened today. We must, um, before we kickstart, uh, honorable members, appreciate uh, the work, uh, in fact, the working relations that we've had with the department, uh, specifically the outgoing minister uh, for women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Minister Mayi Tengwane Mashabane. Uh, we've worked uh, quite well with her, though we've uh, had challenges, but I think we have been able as a to uh, in relation to youth and persons with disability, U Minister Omamu Kosazani Lamin Zuma, together with the Deputy Minister, or Minister, Deputy DM, Tolashe, you are warmly welcome, uh, Honorable uh, Minister and Deputy Minister to this portfolio committee. We are hoping, together with the National Youth Development Agency as well as CGE, that we will have good working relations um, with the ministry. And obviously, as we continue to play our oversight role, ensure that the lives of the vulnerable, uh, the women, the young people, as well as the persons with disabilities are improved uh, through the work that uh, you are doing and the leadership that will be provided by your good selves in the department. Uh, by those Uh, honorable members, will come and welcome this meeting. Let's get the apologies, uh, uh, honor, uh, sorry, Neliswa. Thank you, honorable chairperson. I have received um, an, a number of apologies. One, it's from um, honorable Ma Marekwa, as she is traveling for an oversight visit with the other committee. Same as Honorable Shongo, she also she's also um, traveling for oversight with the PC on, on social development, and I've already indicated apology for the chairperson of the meeting, and I've also received um, a letter from Honorable Minister Honorable Lamini, who will not be able to attend the meeting due to she's speaking at a, a graduation that's organized by the South African Council for the Blind. That's also taking place today. Um, Honorable Sharif will join the meeting at half past 10 as she's got the, a doctor's appointment now at half past nine. And the last one is it's Miss from Miss Alexander Proctor, board member. She has an emergency in her company, so she won't be able to join today's meeting. Those are the apologies that I have received, Chairperson. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nelly. So, but with all the apologies, do we meet quorum as the portfolio committee with the members present? Yes, we do. We have about um, 
seven. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. And to honorable members for your attendance. Uh, let us then proceed uh, and uh, receive the report as a follow-up of the National Youth Development Agency um, quarter one and quarter two for the 2022-2023 financial year. We had requested honorable members that it's important that we are able to track and trace the work of all the board members uh, of the NYDA. And uh, we do understand that uh, they are busy in provinces uh, conducting work. We also appreciate the fact that there was a program which uh, was held in the Eastern Cape. We, we widely communicated. Uh, it, I think it was relating to the memorial lecture of uh, the former president, uh, Udata Nelson Mandela. We saw that the minister had, uh, the newly appointed minister, in fact, had graced the program and it looked like it was a very successful program. We appreciate that. But we will hand over to you, uh, Chairperson, uh, to take us through and uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Over to you, Chairperson. Is the chairperson on the platform? Yes, she is. Yes, yes, yes. She, is. she seems to have muted herself. Maybe she could just unmute herself on the picture. Chair, please, may you unmute yourself? Uh, can somebody from the team, either the CEO or any of the board members, try and uh, contact the chairperson just to check whether she's having any challenges with joining? And um, maybe she's experiencing some problems with her network. Okay, whilst we're still waiting for the chairperson to join, uh, maybe DM will give you an opportunity to uh, greet the team uh, on the platform composed of the honorable members of the portfolio committee. We have honorable PT present. There is a honorable Shengwa, Umam Shengwa, Ukona. There's a honorable Sharif present on the platform, we have Honorable Ngobo, we have Honorable Masondo, and uh, I don't know whether I'm leaving any of the other uh, Honorable members out, but these are the members of the portfolio committee. What about all... me? Who is me? Mam Kaul. Ah, oh, Mam Kaul, how can I forget? Um, we have Honorable Kaula who has rejoined the portfolio committee. That's why he called her Mam Kaula. Remember, we took at the corner before. And then we have Honorable Kaula. This is the team of the portfolio committee, uh, Honorable DM. I'm sure that as time goes by, we will be able to have other members uh, being introduced to your good self, uh, Honorable Stay Shongo, as well as uh, Honorable Carol Piri. 
uh, those are the members of the portfolio committee. We'll hand over to you, uh, Honorable DM, to um, greet the members. And if you have any other remarks you wish to pass on, we would greatly appreciate it. Over to you, Honorable DM. Uh, Marek was also present, Chair. Yes, Honorable Marek was sorry, sorry for that, uh, Sis Boni. Over to you, Honorable DM. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson of the meeting. Please allow me to be. Uh, I am now in the Eastern Cape, I've just landed. My apologies, please. I've joined this meeting, Honorable Chair, as I'm part of the family, uh, as per the new appointments. I am excited to have been able to join you. I know I've been part of the general work, but I've never been part of the actual work that we are doing. I'm quite excited. I commit that I will be there for me being marshaled by your committee. Of course, I'll be seated on the other side. I'll commit Mam Kaula that as the chair has alluded to the fact that you have been working very well with the committee, that will be the case from myself as well. I will, through the leadership of Minister uh, Kosazana Lameni Zuma, we will steer the ship together and we will make sure that we have accountability and we are committed to be accountable to yourselves without any conditions, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate your warm welcoming. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable DM. And uh, we, we, we really um, are extending as this portfolio committee a warm, warm, warm welcome. And we are really looking forward to the working relations, um, good working relations with uh, the ministry, yourself and the Honorable Minister, Umama Unkosazanita Minizuma. Uh, Honorable members, I'm not sure and um, CEO whether the chairperson is back on the platform. Good morning, uh, honorable members and acting chairperson. Um, I do trust that I'm audible now. Yes, you are audible, uh, chairperson. You may proceed. All right. Thank you very much, acting chairperson. And I must just apologize. Um, I was using a different gadget that had a difficulty with the audio, so I had to switch and use my phone. Um, however, if the honorable members would want me to switch on my camera, um, you will then indicate, um, but if not, and through you then acting chair, I will then uh, proceed with the brief opening remarks before we get into the presentation of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> Live as a chairperson, uh, but if uh, as the meeting continues, you are struggling with your audio, we will allow for you to switch off your video. But uh, you may just show yourself and then you proceed. Okay. Um, okay. I do hope that I am visible. I'm just now trying to set up my phone because I indicated I am using my phone now. Um, but yes, uh, thank you very much, Acting Chairperson, and good morning to the Honourable Members. And I must equally extend our warm welcome to our new Minister, uh, Minister Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma in absentia, as well as our new Deputy Minister, uh, Deputy Minister Sisi uh, Sitolashe, and indeed uh, echo the sentiments, Honorable um, Acting Chairperson, that uh, we look forward to working quite closely with um, both the Minister as well as the Deputy Minister. And we can also confirm to this portfolio committee that um, work with um, the new ministers has commenced. Um, we have been in rigorous and intense meetings um, just to appraise the ministry on the work that has been done by the agency thus far, um, as well as you know, getting their inputs insofar as how we can uh, better enhance and better, um, better um, uh, deliver the mandates that we have been given. 
But um, just to then jump straight into the business of the day, uh, honorable members, um, as the acting chairperson has correctly stated, uh, the meeting today is intended to, to appraise the honorable members on the work that the board has undertaken from the time of our appointment. Um, honorable members would recall that in the previous meetings, uh, there were salient issues that the honorable members had raised in so far as the visibility of the board members. And so today's presentation is to appraise the honorable members on the individual as well as the collective work that uh, the board members has undertaken. Um, so, so with that, um, mine would then just to briefly give an over overarching um, assessment, overarching input insofar as board uh, work has been concerned. Um, and it's firstly important to note that uh, the board really would have reflected on our first year in office um, and we have been able to achieve collectively the following, but obviously not limited to um, one, we were able to implement during our term the revitalized National Youth Service Program, where we've been able to reach 50,000 participants who are engaged in meaningful community service. Uh, they're able to earn an income as well as um, get the necessary skills um, to be able to capacitate them insofar as their employability is concerned. Um, we, during our term, have also been able to secure funding for stretching out our grant program. Uh, we've been able to facilitate the transition to a digital organization when all our products and services are now available online. Uh, we have been ex uh, extended, we have extended rather, um, our CWP program for Mpumalanga. Um, as well as being able to participate extensively on the CWP um, with the specific focus on the agricultural programs, giving us access to large scale agro projects when young people are able to access those particular opportunities. Uh, we have also been able, when we look at partnerships, been able to establish six CETA funded partnerships within the organization during our term as well as uh, we've seen the completion of the first approved integrated youth development strategy, uh, as well as the first progress report of this particular strategy is concerned. And lastly, honorable members, the agency has been able to reduce its vacancy rate to under 10% on the organizational structure, and, and we've been able to maintain a stable human resources environment. Uh, lastly, honorable members, just to capture on the collective work of the board, um, honorable members would have known that the year 2023, we kicked off with board members rolling out our NYDA back to school campaign that has been implemented in various provinces uh, for the first phase wherein our board members were uh, deployed to their relevant provinces uh, when they embarked in the back to school program, distributing school shoes, uh, dignity packs, um, and then the, the basic necessities that will ultimately uplift the, the dignity of, of both the boy and girl child at an elementary level. Um, so then today's reporting, honorable members, as already indicated, will then look at the individual work that the board members have undertaken, um, given that that was the request by um, the honorable members. So I will just request that the presentation be flighted uh, before we walk or open it up through you, acting chair, uh, for each uh, individual board member to take us through their particular work plan. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. But I would request that you firstly introduce your entire team uh, present currently in this meeting. All right, yes, um, that is sorry, noted. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Also, Neka Malak, Asil Zwanga, as a nomang as you may mean, and get train as you should to ban Wagabani and Nakob. Uh, okay, can you introduce the uh, team, the, the, the entire team, uh, um, Chairperson Asanda Luata, and, um, and, and if they are present, another they must just show their faces as well so that uh, they are uh, honorable members, including Umam Kaula, who has recently returned to the Portfolio Committee, is able 
to see and the name to see the faces and attach the names, including the main, uh, the deputy minister. Okay, and Yabule Lakakulu Slalo. I will start off then by introducing myself. I Kamalam Gu Asanda Luata. I am the executive chairperson of the National Youth Development Agency. And present in the meeting today, we've got the deputy chairperson. Um, as well as board members, we've got Mr. Tulisa Angel, Deputy Chairperson, let me just go back, uh, Ms. Karabo Mohale. We've got board members, uh, Mr. Tulisa Angela, Ms. Pearl Pile, uh, Ms. Lebuchang Mulaisi, and Mr. Avelam Chachubana. Yes, those are the board members present as well as the CEO. So I'll hand over to the deputy chair um, who will then introduce herself with her video on, followed by the board members. Thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you very much, uh, chairperson of the board and the acting chairperson of today's meeting, um, the deputy minister and colleagues in the department and honorable members of parliament. My name is Karabo Mahale. I am the Executive Deputy Chairperson of the NYDA Board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Chairperson. Um, can we get the board members to introduce themselves? Okay, I'll go next. Um, morning, everyone. Morning. Chair, acting chair, morning chair of the board, uh, deputy minister, as well as all honorable members, including the members of the board. My name is Levohang Mulaisi, um, a board member. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Tenkela. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, good morning to the acting chairperson of the portfolio committee and um, honorable members, uh, our deputy minister, um, and my colleagues on the board, um, and everyone here. My name is Tuli Sanjela. I am a member of the board of the NYDA. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanjela. Ms. Pile. Uh, good morning, everybody, the acting deputy chair, deputy minister, honorable members, uh, board members, and everyone else on the platform that we've missed. Um, my name is Paul Play, and I'm a board member at the NYD. Thank you very much, Ms. Play. Mr. Mchachubana. Good morning, chair. Good morning uh, to the chair of uh, the portfolio committee, the deputy minister, and member, honorable members of the portfolio committee. The name is Avela, so the name is Mchachubana, board member. Thank you very much. The face, uh, the face, Mr. Avela, Mchachubana. Apologies, the chair, just that uh, <clears throat> we are busy for presidential visit here by person Jones, so I thought I'd opened it, so I don't know what happened there. I'll just show maybe for a second, then Sibon uh, is our Mr. Anjan. Okay. Okay. Born. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Next. Thank you very much. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, those are the board members that were present. Um, I believe the other members would have submitted their apologies in writing to the portfolio committee secretary. Thank you, Chair. You may you may proceed, uh, Chairperson. All right. Thank you very much, Honourable Members. Um, we'll then jump straight into that presentation uh, and move to slide number four. And can we move to slide four? 
All right. So the first part today, honorable members, um, is an indication of the structure of the board um, with the various committees. We've got the executive management committee. We've got audit and risk. We have the investment committee, human resources and remunerations committee, the information, communication and technology steering committee. We have the social and ethics committee. Um, and um, the last part then just shows the, the number of meetings um, since appointment until quarter one. Can we move to the next slide? And then the activities, um, this is just an over arcing breakdown. We have the various site visits to the Western Cape that took place in August. We had the Eastern Cape site visits in Kabeja, um, Pumalaga site visit, as well as the National School of Government Training and the Board Strategy Workshop. Next slide. Okay, and then I will, through you, Acting Chairperson, then just request uh, Ms. Lebohang to take the honorable members through her part of the presentation, um, and we'll then take it in that order. Thanks, Chair. I'll just take you through just briefly activities for the year 2022-2023. Maybe just to indicate that um, board members were part of the Solomon Matangu um, scholarship graduation dinner, um, as well as attendance to the IYDS um, summit. Participation also included attendance of June 16 commemorations, as well as um, the various side visits that the chairperson was alluding to. Um, others took place either in Gauteng or in the um, Western Cape. Um, including a site visit that took place in, in, in PE. Um, board members were also part of the BRICS Youth Summit last year. It did take place virtually. Um, it was hosted by the Chinese youth. Um, we participated um, virtually as it was a virtual engagement, as well as a broader investment strategy. This is aligned to the board's um, broad vision around including broader stakeholders on top of um, government to be a part of um, the investment of the, 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 the NYDA, as well as a broader comms um, strategy, um, as well as being a part of the mentorship sessions with the chairperson who has um, introduced a, a series of mentorship sessions. Um, and at times she includes us to be a part of those events. Could you please move to the next slide, please? Next slide. Okay, it seems to have been omitted um, the one that I have as two additional activities, but but that's fine. I think it was just to indicate um, the, the the governance training that the board members have been a part of towards the latter part of of of. of of last year. In terms of, of, of board activities, that's that's my presentation. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Lebu. Uh, Mr. Tulisa. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, the my contribution um, on this would would obviously, there are some events that are similar, which would be your Solomon Mashangu um, graduation uh, dinner. Um, we also went to the Rustenberg um, Eguruleni um, NYDA Portfolio Committee Oversight. We were there with honorable members. Um, the IYDS Summit Chair, I, I, I just wish to underpin and echo the words of the chairperson around the significance of the IYTS uh, being the first uh, integrated youth development strategy that was adopted by uh, cabinet um, since the formation of the NYDA. But prior to that, we had a summit where we engaged youth organizations and business around um, some of the inputs they needed to make um, on where the IYTS would be, um, the direction the IYTS would take. And we also did site visits and. Um, in, um, in Durban, we visited a number of um, um, areas of our beneficiaries. Uh, honorable members would remember we went to a coffee shop on Florida Road 
uh, and and in the end ended up uh, uh, they ended up accommodating the portfolio committee to hold uh, its impromptu meeting, uh, which I found very generous of the uh, establishment. We also did the launch youth the, the launch of the youth month. Um, we also did the Future of Work um, launch. This is an initiative with the DPSA, uh, where they look at the future of work and what kind of work will we have um, into the future and how do we ensure that the public service um, evolves alongside the evolution that happens in society, in particular, the, uh, the areas of, 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 of digitization within the public sector and making sure that um, um, the public sector is not left behind. And I think it's quite important, um, Chair, for young people to be at the center of that kind of um, establishment and that evolution in order for us to be able to um, influence where we can as is part of our mandate. Um, we also, um, Chair, if I may ask that the first slide be the previous slide, please. Thank you. Um, and then we also did a Youth Day commemoration in the Eastern Cape, we were all involved. Um, we also did um, site visits in Cape Town um, of some of our beneficiaries. In this site visit, we also had an opportunity to engage young people involved in the National Youth Service um, who were doing after hours, after school, uh, physical um, activities with young people. We found that model really um, important. We participated in the BRICS Youth Summit session, which was a virtual session um, in, um, in, in September. And then we did a comm strategy. Um, honorable members, I, I think I must also um, elaborate here to say one of the things that we as a board um, placed as a priority is our need to communicate the work that we get, that we do. And, and this is for two reasons, in order to raise awareness and give information to young people around the need for them to participate in what, in, in, in the various activities that we do. Now, this strategy was, is, the intention of it is to position and reposition the NYDA around it effectively communicating uh, some of its work and some of its products. We did an investment strategy because we recognize that the amount of resources we get allocated uh, from the national fiscal is not enough uh, in order for us to adhere or even meet a portion of our um, uh, mandate. So we then had a strategy to look into how we enhance partnerships and attract in particular private sector uh, partnerships in order for us to augment, if I may use the word, the kind of um, resources that we have. Um, we, were, we participated in the Afrika conference. We also went, uh, the NYDA also uh, was nominated in the 14th annual Feather Awards. And I'm sure I will leave that to the chair to explain what happens there. Uh, we are immensely, suffice to say, we are immensely proud of the recognition that we got from the LGBTQI plus community um, as part of the work that we do. Uh, we also participated in taking parliament to the people, which was um, 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 hosted in, in KZN in the Uku districts, um, um, where honorable members would remember the parliament, uh, the national parliament went into consult communities we provided support on a number of areas and we took down some of the issues that related to um, our mandate and we have since um, followed up in that regard to try and, and resolve some of the issues. Um, in particular, the most common issues there would be young people saying, look, we have applied, we don't seem to be um, receiving uh, assistance or the assistance that I got. Um, was did not meet my expectation and we think because we're transitioning from the kind of um online i mean from the manual system to the online system it was important for us to be able to help young people as well to get access and and, and better navigate that space and uh, next slide please um, and then chair the the last two would be um, attendance at the 
a National School of Government induction for board committees, which was a very eye-opening experience as well, because um, the one can never stop learning. Um, it's important for one to constantly refresh uh, their understanding and also learn new things. Um, and then the last would be attending the board strategic review session, way in which we look at the strategy and look at what we have done and see into the new year, how could we better do things uh, moving forward? Thank you very much, Chair. Um, thanks, Chair. So on my side, um, a lot of the work uh, that I have been part of is through the National Youth Service. Um, so it began, if we look at February, I'm not going to go line by line in the interest of time. Um, the Driving Youth Unemployment Seminar, uh, which was around how you support small youth-owned businesses um, to create jobs. And that was done in partnership with Harambe and YES. Um, we then had the scholarship graduation dinner, the portfolio committee oversights, IYDS, which my colleagues have already spoke about. Um, I'll speak briefly about the National Youth Service work um, since that's a common feature on my activities report. Um, so the National Youth Service, uh, as you'll hear in our presentations and you've, you've heard before, is a project of the NYDA that seeks to place young people into uh, work experience opportunities with community development organizations. Um, and as a board member that has a civil society background, um, it's something that's right up my alley to provide strategic support uh, to the NYS team. Um, so a lot of what we've been doing with the youth service is figuring out how do we make, how do we bring the National Youth Service into um, community organizations that are really on the ground in different communities around the country. Um, the way the structure of the youth service works currently, or at least when it, when it began last year, is that it focuses very heavily on very large um, civil society organizations and a lot of the kind of very nitty gritty tangible work that small organizations in communities do um, that doesn't qualify them for the program because of the, the issues that small organizations have with things like compliance and capacity. And so a lot of the work that I've been doing with the, the NYS team is to figure out how do we capacitate smaller organizations so that they can form part of this program so that they can collaborate with bigger organizations and so that we can also learn what the landscape of civil society looks like um, and so a lot of these work sessions with the NYS has, has been about doing that um, and then as you can see at the at the bottom um, the NGO workshop with the youth service and so this is part of provincial consultations with NGOs that have been part of the youth service and NGOs that are interested in being part of the youth service to figure out how do we onboard small organizations but also what does capacity building look like for small community-based organizations um, in the hopes that we can create some kind of NPO incubator so that we can upskill small organizations so that they can form part of these bigger programs um, and learn about things like compliance, which is often not something that's taught um, to community-based uh, groupings. Um, we also had the um, comms and the investment strategy sessions. These are important um, sessions that the board got involved in um, to sit with our comms unit and our investment unit and say, you know, what is the vision that the board has for the organization, um, but also to take the feedback that we get from sessions such as this. Um, we all know in a lot of our sessions throughout the year last year, um, something that the committee raised with us consistently is that we needed more effective communications work. And we really took that to heart. And so sat with our comms unit to say, well, what does effective communication look like? What have we been doing well? But where are also the gaps and how do we help each other fill those gaps and create a crumb strategy that can really take the work of the NYDA um, to young people that are not hearing about it. Um, and then the last thing I'll speak about here is the... Um, the mental health uh, program that's been developed with the NYS as well. Um, again, something that was come from the portfolio committee uh, was around the focus that we should have on mental health, especially amongst young people. And we've been asked many questions about what we're doing as the board um, to address mental health concerns in the country. And so a lot of the work that I've been doing um, 
is to help develop what an NYDA mental health program can look like. Um, I have one that I run with the organization that I work with already. And so it's just been about plugging in um, the skills and the expertise that we all have to try and help um, the NYDA with new ideas and new strategies um, so that we can create programs um, that speak to the needs of young people. I think that's all on my slide. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mchachubana. Um, yes, yes, Mr. Mchachubana, it's your segment of the presentation. My apologies, Chair. Um, I seem to be struggling, but uh, I think now I'm fine. Uh, greetings to the chairperson of the portfolio committee, um, the members of the portfolio committee, board members. Uh, mine uh, chair is very short and precise, and that uh, part of the reporting which I think. Uh, should have been reflected here yeah, is that um, uh, last year one took a position uh, to ensure that we um, increase our reach, particularly in the rural Eastern Cape. Uh, and uh, we have been spending some time here uh, since uh, the June 16 celebrations because that offered us an opportunity to engage with youth organizations that were present uh, with, that we invited here and then uh, i think uh, we did have some engagements with the premier himself and uh, he extended our support and that we must continue to work with various departments of the eastern cape in the province um, we must continue to he issued an instruction that we must work with the district municipalities and um, uh, uh, local municipalities. So we have been doing that uh, quite well. We have established relations. And I think now we're in a better position uh, to that we, we, we are going to advance the work of the NYTA. Um, so um, this report here is just a report of uh, the events that uh, we one attended, but um, probably one did not want to submit minutes or um, programs agreed to by uh, various departments and municipalities in the Eastern Cape. So that's why my report is this uh, short here. But uh, certainly, I think the company SAC does have a very detailed report on the work that we are doing in the Eastern Cape. But uh, we have been doing that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Um, we'll then proceed to the presentation from the executive director's office. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Okay, so briefly, um, honorable members, on my presentation, it would have been to reflect on the Solon Mahlango Scholarship graduation dinner that took place in April. Uh, we then undertook a portfolio committee oversight visit in Rustenburg, as well as in Ekurleni. Um, as the, some of the board members would have alluded to, um, the Integrated Youth Development Strategy Summit took place in May. Uh, we then had a parliamentary oversight visit to City Bank, um, as well as uh, presentations to the Portfolio Committee on our annual performance plan. Uh, I was then part of a Disability Career Expo in May last year. Um, can we move to the next slide? We would have launched uh, the Youth Month in Gauteng, as well as various uh, Youth Day Builder programs that took place um, in different parts of the country, such as um, the launching of the call center with the Department of Small Business Development. Uh, we had a, a, a study tour to one of the incubators 
um, that's owned or that's um, that hubs young people in the Becha, the propeller incubator. We I would have also been part of a dialogue with students at the Nelson Mandela University, um, the youth dialogue on mental health in in Tata, uh, following from the sentiments that the honorable members would have raised and so far as mental health is concerned. Um, I would have also been part of a dialogue that looked at combating gender-based violence and femicide, um, painting of murals in various schools in, um, in the Eastern Cape, as well as side visits to the various NYS beneficiaries. Um, in June, we, I was also part of the launch of the National Youth uh, HIV Prevention Strategy in Limpopo. Um, this strategy was aimed at ensuring that all departments and relevant stakeholders implement what is outlined in the recommendations of, that are, that are um, outlined in that strategy, as well as a Youth Day commemoration that took place in June in the Eastern Cape. Uh, next slide, please. Um, very okay. So I was also part of various um, broadcasting um, panels, such as the Lunge Lolako, um, which was broadcast to mark Youth Month, as well as the launch of the Youth Crime Prevention Strategy in KZN. Um, and I was part of the creating opportunities for young people in the Northern Cape. This was a Twitter platform with the MEC. Um, when we were giving young people an opportunity to speak or we were imparting um, to them the various opportunities that exist both um, from the NYDA as well as the provincial government of the Northern Cape. Um, then there was the second international BRICS youth camp um, that took place in August. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? as well as various site visits to Cape Town. Um, that was in August as well. Um, I was part of or initiated a event called Women of Firsts. Um, this was a high tea initiative that would allow for women who have been the first woman in their respective fields to pledge um, to work with the NYDA and so that we can have better and more efficient and coordinated uh, work through uh, stakeholder engagements, through private sector, civil society, and the likes. Um, we had a communication strategy session, as well as an investment strategy session. Um, and uh, we were part of the Municipal BRICS Forum. This was a virtual platform that took place in November, as well as earlier um, on, the, the, we were um, the recipients of um, the, the, the Feather Awards, where we were being recognized as um, a, a, the public sector that would have been the most inclusive in so far as the work that we are doing uh, towards um, the LGBTQI community. Um, that those awards took place in November, as well as being part of the presidential uh, summit on gender-based violence and femicide. Um, we attended the National School of Governance induction and board committee trainings. Um, and we had our um, board strategic uh, review session that took place in December. I think that then, oh, okay, that's not the end of my presentation. Um, we had our NYDA management session, um, as well as um, the metric results announcements that took place um, in January, when the minister um, would have um, organized an event where she announces as per the norm, the metric results for the previous year, previous academic year. Um, and then lastly, we had the progress on the Presidential Youth Employment Intervention, um, which is our National Youth Service Program uh, that took place in January in the Western Cape, which was a roundtable discussion where we invited NPOs, youth-owned NPOs, to be a part of this particular roundtable discussion. Um, that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, honorable members. Thank you very much, uh, Chair, and to honorable members. I will be presenting the, the report of the Office of the Executive Deputy Chairperson. And we're going to be focusing on 
quarter two and quarter three. The first page just gives an overall view of the work that the office has been doing on behalf of the board. We are tasked with leading special projects as well as um, investments um, on behalf of the board. The focus areas for quarter two and quarter three, we had a collaboration with the SABC one to air two shows on SABC one. There was a greater focus on mental health and GBV awareness. We had a collaboration with NEMISA to train 150 entrepreneurs on enhancing their digital skills. We hosted a book drive that collected over 1,500 books at current educational books that will be handed out to different communities. We partnered with MICTA embassies, that is Mexico, Indonesia, South Korea, Turkey, and Australia, to train 30 young women in business. We participated in various multilateral platforms. We also participated in the United Nations Convention on Climate Change, which was COP27. And we compiled a 365-day report to ensure that there is traceable evidence on the work that is done on behalf of the board um, towards building a bankable image. Next page. This is just a geographical footprint on the different provinces that we would have focused on in both quarter two and quarter three. Can we go to the next page? The report will be segmented into three. We'll be focusing on investments and special projects, outreach, and then we'll just, just um, mention high on a high level the partnership meetings that we had. We joined the Ellen Gray Roundtable, which is an ecosystem um, that was designed to bring different stakeholders on board to come up with solutions on how we can be able to resolve the current challenges that are faced by young people in the main and focus more on uh, employment creation. We hosted a stand of dinner for the University of Sao Paulo. In our quarter one report, we reflected that the board um, led a special project to take four young people to Brazil on an exchange program that focused on agriculture. This end of dinner brought different stakeholders um, in the ecosystem together to ensure that these young people, when they do return to South Africa, there are certain you know, processes that have been put in place to enable them to continue in the agricultural endeavors. In the main, we can mention that two of the four young people that were sent to Brazil received access to land with the support of the Department of Agriculture and Reform and Rural Development. And the other student will be going back to Brazil to pursue her master's um, in um, animal science. The high level participants included the MEC of Finance, um, board member was Ms. Lebo Hangulaisi present, the Brazil Embassy, as well as the BRICS Youth Association. We co-hosted um, in July as well, the fourth SADC Youth Forum, which is a youth forum that is held preceding the SADC presidential meeting, heads of state meeting. The focus of this particular forum um, was more on climate change and how we can be able to ensure that we lobby for there to be climate invoice, not only for young people in South Africa, but as well as the region holistically. The forum was marked by high level participation from the Minister of COPTA, Honorable Dr. Nkosazana Daminizuma, as well as the Deputy Minister um, of the Department of International Relations and Cooperation, that is Honorable um, Alvin Buertes. Um, we introduced what we call a stay lit session. This is a virtual platform that shares information to young people on various opportunities that are available. On this particular stay lit session, we focused on international scholarships. We received presentations from the Department of Higher Education. They presented on the Mauritius Africa Scholarship, and we also received presentation on the Turkey Scholarship that gave young people an opportunity to go study any qualification of their choice in Turkey. The qualifications were fully funded. Next page. We attended the sixth annual SADC Industrialization Week. This is also a precursor event to the SADC Heads of State. The Industrialization Week is an annual public-private engagement platform aimed at fostering opportunities for intra-African trade. Uh, because we lead the investment committee on behalf of the board, we found it very important that there should be networks that is created for young people to trade, not only in SADC, but as well as branching out on the African continent. So 
this particular program spoke to how we can be able to ensure that young people gain access um, to markets. This led us to building a relationship with the SADC Business Council, as well as the SADC Secretariat. Um, on the 10th of August, we're invited to participate on behalf of NYDA in the 987 Women on Power FM. We took over Power FM from 10 o'clock until midnight. The show intended to create a platform for women to share their knowledge and expertise on how they can be able to you know, break barriers in, 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 in areas that are predominantly male dominated. The show was co-hosted with a board member, was Ms. Mulebohang Mulaisi. Participants in the show included Dr. Musawe Nkosi, who graduated as the youngest PhD holder in Africa, the Consul General of South Africa to Shanghai, as well as House of Zwide actress, Ms. Lwazi Mtembu. On the 12th of August, we hosted the inaugural Singapore South Africa Youth Dialogue. This was in collaboration with the South Africa High Commission in Singapore and the Character and Leadership Academy that is also in Singapore. The intention was for us not only to commemorate International Youth Day, but to also share best practices on how we can be able to ensure that young people in those respective countries exchange ideas, exchange knowledge, and also create networks amongst themselves for future collaboration. Speakers um, in the particular event um, included Her Excellency, the High Commissioner um, in Singapore, um, Honorable Nom Pendulum Kato of the South African um, Parliament, um, the Singapore Member of Parliament, as well as representatives from Future Ready Asia, as well as the Character Leadership. Next page. In the same day on International Youth Day celebration, we also joined DECO um, at the University of Free State. The dialogue was led by the Deputy Minister Honorable Alvin Butters. It was also a conversation to continue highlighting the need for there to be international networks and knowledge exchange for the benefit of young people in the country. In August, we commemorated Women's Month by hosting a Women's Day mental health hack this was not only speaking to mental health, but also the physical health of women. We brought together various experts to join the walk. We had a clinical psychologist who spoke primarily on what could be the coping mechanisms and what is it that women can be able to do in their workplace to ensure that they deal and manage um, with their uh, mental health that um, they could experience in the workplace. We also had a presentation from a people analytics manager, um, Ms. Jeannie Talib. On the 6th of September, we joined the Turkey Scholarship Farewell Luncheon. Um, in January of 2022, the Embassy of Turkey approached us to assist them to recruit young people to apply for the Turkey Scholarship to go study in Turkey. We assisted them in this process to engage with various institutions of higher learning, and we also disseminated the information on the scholarships to various um, platforms. 17 young South Africans were selected to go and study qualifications of their choice in accredited universities in Turkey. Um, the farewell was mainly to ensure that we send off these young people and just give them advice on how they can be able to acclimatize to a new environment. On the 21st to the 25th of September, we participated in the Africa Aerospace Defense Expo, um, which is Africa's only aerospace and defense expo. And it combines trade exhibition as well as an air show to show military capacity of the South African Defense Force. This event is held by Inul in the city of Tswane and is said to be one of the largest um, contributors to the country's GDP in show years and is regarded as a national asset. The NYDA was an exhibitor at the expo. We engaged with various young people. Um, the numbers are that over 10,000 learners got to interact with different leading aerospace defense companies. The NYDA at the event um, handed out calculators as well as mathematics and physical science study guides to learners. Next page. Um, as we would have highlighted in the overview of quarter two and quarter three, um, the program 
on the introduction to digital entrepreneurship ran from the 1st of October to the 15th of December, where over 150 young people participated and were recruited in this program. On the 10th of October, we participated in commemorating World Mental Health Day in collaboration with the Character and Leadership Academy in Singapore, as well as the South African High Commission in Singapore. And the dialogue that was hosted was under the theme, Making Mental Health and Wellbeing a Priority. On the 11th of October, we joined the SABC One in their expressing show as they commemorated the International Day of the Girl Child. The book drive that now sits at us having collected over 1,500 books um, was hosted from the 14th to the 24th of October. The celebration ceremony, uh, rather graduation ceremony for the MICTA empowerment project that we reflected on that trained 30 South African businesswomen to participate and in, enhance their business skills um, was hosted on the 14th of October in one of the MICTA embassies. On the 20th of, of October, we were invited to be a guest lecturer at the Tony University of Technology. The Department of Management Entrepreneurship hosted an entrepreneurial masterclass series and they invited the NYDA to come and make a presentation on how we can be able to support them in the work that they do and what are the important areas that they need to be able to um, look into as and when they grow their businesses for, for the future. Next page. On the 27th, on the 24th of October, my apologies, we attended the COP27 consultation, which was led by Honorable Barbara Christus, the Minister of the Department of Fisheries and Forestry. This was ahead of COP27, COP27, which was earmarked to happen in Egypt. On the 27th of October, we attended the DUT Innovation Week, which brought together various stakeholders to reflect and also to allow the Durban University community to present and showcase groundbreaking research and technological innovations. One of the greatest innovations that actually came from there that we learned of is the introduction of their robot that would be able to communicate in Setswana. We anticipate that when they do launch, the robot will definitely continue participating in the work that they do. The NYDA as well participated in the presidential summit on GBVF as exhibitors, as well as participants. So at the exhibition, we're able to engage with different stakeholders on how we can be able to collaborate um, on areas for GBVF awareness. Part of the exhibition was us also handing out paper sprays and whistles to women in exchanging knowledge and the best practices in terms of women protecting themselves in their homes and in their communities. From the 6th to the 19th of November, the COP27 took place from in, in Egypt. And the NYDA participated in this. We formed part of the South African delegation to COP27, which comprised of over 300 officials from national, provincial, local government, as well as various civic society organizations. At this point, we did identify that there is a need for there to be um, increased focus on climate change by the National Youth Development Agency. On the 16th of November, we joined the Eastern Cape Investment Conference that was led by the Premier um, hosted um, in East London. This was an effort for us to ensure that we lobby and advocate for there to be set asides in various provinces. Um, this also presented a critical moment for the NYDA to play an active role in engaging investors on the importance of investing in young people's ideas and their endeavors. Next page. We also joined the expressions show that we mentioned um, in the overview. We hosted the BRICS summer school that was co-hosted together the South African BRICS Youth Association, NIHSS, as well as the Durban University of Technology. This was hosted at DUT and it brought together over 50 young people from over 16 countries, inclusive of all BRICS nations, together with other countries from the global South. Um, this was in the main to discuss on how they can be reformed in multilateral platforms and how we ensure the inclusion and participation of young people in the main. Key presenters at the BRICS Summer School included the Minister of 
the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disability, the Deputy Minister at COPTA, Deputy Minister at, at, at DECO, as well as the Premier of KwaZulu-Natal. This school was covered by the SABC One and it was aired on the expression show. We had an engagement with the Chinese Culture Center. The center anticipates that the project that they want to run, which is going to be bringing different companies from China that are operating in South Africa, they anticipate that it will it has potential to create over 10,000 jobs in the next one to two years. We participated in the Novodist Food Garden Project, as well as the Orange Farm GBF Walk. Next page. These are the outreach programs um, that we hosted as the office. We hosted a virtual session called Doctor's Corner. We partnered with a young doctor called Dr. Musam Tombeni. This was with intention to ensure that we engage young people in various health matters that affect them, and also to dispel certain anomalies and stereotypes that are created in society. The three-part series tackled mental health, substance abuse, and safe sexual health. And these shows were aired on the NYDAF uh, Facebook page, as well as the YouTube page. We also participated in the Nelson Mandela Day um, that was hosted by the Charlotte Manya Matlake Institute and the keynote was the acting public protector. On the 13th of August, we joined the Gassi Game Meet Awareness Drive. This was an intention to find ways in which young people can be able to enter this space. And um, we did realize that young people, a lot of young people don't know that there is the game meat industry and we wanted to gather information as well as contact as to how young people can be able to take advantage of unique opportunities that this particular industry provides. On the 25th of August, we participated in a panel discussion that was hosted by the Black Management Forum in partnership with Sunlam. We also attended Witepo High School Career Expo that was hosted at Eric Law High School in Musina. Um, the event was honored by members of parliament, Honorable um, Pinky Kekana, who, is, who was the deputy minister in the presidency, Honorable Miyoko Matuba, Honorable Carol Piri, as well as the mayor of the municipality. Next page. We will not be going into detail um, in the partnership meetings because they are precursors to the events that we would have had and um, that we mentioned. We'll just highlight one or two that are still going to be reported in quarter four. And one of those is the meeting that we had <clears throat> on the 15th of July with the Houting Department of Economic Development. Um, in the next page as well, we continue to have a meeting with the Houting Enterprise Propeller. This was an intention to find ways that we can be able to put a youth fund together in the Houting province. We can confirm that there has been movement on it. Um, there is a commitment of a blended funding of 30 million rand in the next three years. That would mean that for each financial year, the Houting Enterprise Propeller will be contributing 10 million rand towards that particular um, fund. And the NYDA through its already existing grant program could potentially match that particular funding. But this is going to be presented to the board for consideration and the board will be able to make a determination um, around what areas can we be able to strengthen to ensure that this relationship actually comes to fruition. And we've got a youth fund that is set up in the Gauteng um, province. There's another critical meeting that we also hosted around ending period poverty. We have been in engagement with um, an NGO named Team Free Sanitary Towels. They are very passionate about menstrual health and hygiene, and we have been collaborating with them on a number of programs and supporting the work that they do in ensuring that we bring an end to period poverty in South Africa. Next page. Um, let's also move, these are other meetings as well that we had, most of the projects had already materialized. Thank you very much. That is the end of the presentation from the Office of the Executive Deputy Chairperson on behalf of the NYDA Board.
Chairperson, are we done? Chairperson. No, I'm going to say something 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 to say to us. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, we can confirm that that is the end of the presentation of the board. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, to the board of the National Youth Development Agency and the detailed uh, presentations that you have given us around the work that uh, the individual board members are engaged in. Um, it shows us that you are on the ground you are amongst the young people and the programs that uh, you are delivering are really welcomed by us as a portfolio committee. Honorable members, I will give you an opportunity to now uh, engage on the report that we have received from the different uh, and individual board members of the NYDA. I will take hands. I see the hand of Uma Mukaula. Honorable MPT. Okay, I'm only seeing two hands, Honorable Member. Okay, members, uh, Honorable Ngobo, Mam Sonti. So it's Mam Kaula, Honorable MPT. Honorable Ngobo, and uh, then the last hand is that of uh, Umam Sonti. In that order, Mam Kaul. And giving a little acting chair, giving a little a go on the department of Colonel Apaga into NYTA board members. Um, sorry, I'm not. And Gibonga and Kosing and Zamezin, um, Nitinga Bonga, a presentation, a good NYT A. Gipinde and Gibonga, um, we put young. Yona Maui Villa Lele Ikuluma, a six seven is a band to back in an inkinga a corner jinani. Oguti abona ngizingi zisho lezi zinto ningzwega. Abona nto yeti orga kulu ibu ying pate gambe. Abona jela na maskulu mangu lo kuzanga lendesi o first number one engfunuku kwa zuguti. Nige ni pega ina la bantu ba maskilzi abase makaya na. Gishi so guti man kulumanga la babantu. Gibabona mna benga nagi wench obonto bonto bonto bo. Gibabona manje mai kamisa la na uza ulokuza na ipre upresenta la na ibala ga kulgazi la kogo tepe ni ibala go florida. Angboni ing tinte la emakai. Nase madokshin la kona kona bantu bagit. La kinjoba nkuluma na wenje kune kune ntanga no ye yuti abantaba kubasegile e wad 54. 
No man we are only what fifty four yacht, no man light a win, no man a mapetel. Go to a auto look lavabandu abafun pila, betinebe pila gama gama disability grant. Banawa mat skills abanawa or rabanya bafundile. Baya was bashal bachawa in day one, jeta oguti. Batole Utha Sole Mal in Jenga Lab and Jen Kulumanga Wagam Kis Ba Jalangishama Sports by Aziwa even a Tilwin go mas palange one to seven sana no mas palange. Go to mas pala basis na luto told ba puma by a hamba ba wenza mas pot fina babu yep sugu ba ma neing aneza banda bahamba nazo a ban na yung she transport baba tatela bandu ing and by busile makai. If you know what I say, I'm going to 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 say, Benza nishama crafty craft to eka bantu magwa azupila. Yonki intaba zenza ayu. Bese ngea la pagu gutoba gu mtlonisho la utulandlela. Tulandlela. Yabonga gutu ato di nomination awati. Mam Kaula, Sizotella Ustuchele of a video, more by we are we are breaker as good or as a champion. Mam Kaula, yeah, the switcher of a video, Mawam, so that Sizo was a good or as we are cut. Okay, my sweetheart, okay, my nurse. Gabo, eh, the Talapas, no man, Quebec. Unga kubega ma ubusu gu 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 unlela ububuzo ubuzo unlela yeah unlela la pani ambonge la ge award unkumbuzo mo nyuminis estesinge na wamaz la South Africa si kupegi la bantu be imali zinge kuzipe la hamba toli award le go saito lutu wito lugo Netherlands figure kon Na ya gunje langi nombuz gute ya nile awati aitoli le baza bam nominate while i youth ya giti isasheli e makaya inga legele longa ma skills. La sa kala la mtambu zo kumbula even wena eting che. La sa situkona ngishona la baba ntu abakandizi maote mkwa konskuluma nge youth. Otol guti malina izul. Abagwaz ngishukand. Angaya nga uta ma shelter aweko. No pump, I beg a prince of John Jamas wrong him, Ted. As I sit a corner, Mufanella by a bona, but my two to his own or let them up as I'm a business, Sebek, a little by the galley. Honor Lababata is a machips. Oh, she's a yam. As Babo and a pella be a bona. Beba Nigaza is the man. Emma Kaya, Una Mashad, I lay the Funaga siba bona bea ema kaguma rural areas goma pumu logo zululand. Ganja logo kung zuli ba la konota ngas beyo google ganja ni la pago uk no mana kon pelele to lupin. Baya makaya, bakuma namakos kare youth e child wut konu chelon jelu en white e. Banigas was the mali batanga look and the kanta bali mango ba. As is in do a eating chairs, the cleaner zing of feed band, Ziag band abatis, Abona Janga Kalangalo, thirty million, Nalo ten million. Onga was good to Ukina Uketa Banjan. A Bessangia Lanago, Cona Dolucellola, the Optinta Coni, you the Lenovula way, Cona Yako, Lamapoti schools. Umbuzo, I'm Oti. Matini lana nkona lagufa la kona nukuti baati babi hambela la ategum inga ane bebe pasega ase. Ok, bai hambeli inga ane pasega ase. Kambe batini nge inga ane pasile koto itinene. Masa kufanele ziema university. Isa wazu ziema university iko la ziko. Bate batanga aneni no mnyango waga education, high education. Babu uzu kuti. 
Jungobinga nezifunda and wasn we account the Wutti Zingagi ingane, Elfanesema University, Zingagi ingane, Elfanesema secondary. Yine and Zutin Jalo Magoz of Alla Unyaga, Aoba Zal Bamba Betta Benu Gaba Palisila is a tattooing and a zab. Is in those longer and funuti? E NYT ain't a particular youth, seaborn, but paint them a visit and a call them a kai. Bayopera is in Ganama University, Afundak zone, a ma toilet, a bagwon, but pairing is here in my class, a wonut, Gabba assess many yini, so would be a fundacon. Ama sports, a swabon, la paya, God, bacon, than there's in his into umtuanes was with a tenen in Oma, and Gabba as a cut and a school and go to so puma and a masport, a maskills, a landy polar no man ends or something. Lana we craft work. Emma kinds of a fund is a band to glimmer, but funu glimmer band, but lim and baton say lamans name mali, but ten a look and a kanda, but was balime, but pile a bandu, e youth a makaya, ni fund is an Indian name como, a good e, balime, then a look betembele, who government. Go, but lend your three fifty ink in Gangente longer years. Um, Eh, egunye enkala ngako. Zitandwa za mezi nitu. Enwaiti eji wegunye ngang owa kona. Nomas owa kona eh, si ilo mnyango. Sesi lana gulendaga mental health. Yebo ngia chabul kutiba wazu gunge nela na ma mental health. But baga ba pege yini inki inga. Yai <laughs> That in a Selimaza EU theatre, Enga, and Manjena, Elana, M. Che, Otol Guti, I pity Lemacanda, Hang over the Kubazigil. Umsuga was a lama tracks at Capagileo, Nanda Nale Lucuzana, Im Nalentola Ebizo, Guti, Im Queen, no Joan. A singing at an atinanganism. Bessa say a lag we lent to your good em. Gia boga bata wetu inde ni shola ponga ma China. Ama China anga banye nabo. Uguba gi anga ami. Enga abe je guktua guko male ni niga yon. Although government eh, sigui pricks nao. Nga abe mtambe mani nigeza ama China imali. Uguti gututugi so i youth. Nigga nig capele yini, no man nigan visit any pebble wooty. Layom sevens and it I creator. A band lay your youth sevens and under bona. Gabe baholi malefanele. No ma wona at Tina Kuba lending in Yazut, Ama China, I am Yanya, Umuntum Yam. And Zokina Lapo. Man, I bet told Connie Chance and a pinned and buoy and go back. I wonder if it's called my NYTA. Good thing, young bar Funababuya like a mover. I gave a buoy and a peck bow fund is a colony in land or agriculture. A good thing, and a fund when the macraft work. Ugoze in Gania Puma. Ia was good to China by Legi, Uno Tela, Utri fifty. A good government go and bonus and at inch I am most of them. See for Casa Gule Mali Yama Grant Labo three fifty. Lana get what in Yam Naya Umuntu. You want to call you what in Gapa Locusin a case at ten. Git a guam guapeli Locusan was a case at ten. Yabanta Bakuba Zegid. Ram Mundu Dio Yonkin to Enza Yonkin to Lamtoana and Shagan Pilu, Kanonom, Koska Zuaka, and Kuba Zigil. 
ufuna nje usizo awukumnyango eh etinche angasa ungongo zanga yonke imshaya ngomzimba ngiyacela NYTA ngijabula kabi ngibona insha yodwa lapho ake ikhombise ukuthi izifuna ukubona insha ingalokhi iglade yakwamzeni ingalokhi ihamba icela ingalokhi ibambe lawa makhiwu yokucela 350 Ngoba thina eze abantu abamnyama ngenye indlela kuyinhlamba ukubona umuntu ahambe icela ukukhangezwa enezandle na yonkinto khona ividyo njathe ngiyiboni solo layo umuntu okhubazekile ongenazi zandla kodwa uyalima wakhe indlu enza yonkinto ngicana mina yena ke le UTI le NYTA ikikwenze lokuthi abantu bakithi ibafundisa ma skills ikhuphe o minister it minister na mbasa ngi bakoko la manda baku basegi na yuto sengi kuto la na yuki kala la ba bantu kuswa bone ni ba nigeza ma skills ngoba minangere ngi sengi chabule luguti gui portfolio commit kuto anga ibot florida jivu kuluma ngi kofi kuluma ngi ntek minangenga ya zguto kuluma ngani uguti ngi mpela mpela ngazo tu beni legu legu la park florida ubali kofi. Lapa bantu belungu, belungu, ba right la bantu bala payan. What about you, muntu? Onga na si start in kabolan ya bong. Si abonga kakuulu mam kaula. Eh, nembuzo oibuzi lenga kabangu kuti ba iswile gashe onje la ba zowa zuguti ba pedule. Neko felal puzo e e e e e e Florida Road sebe ulkaza kuguti ge. E pose in way to eco if you go to Bali, Leganja, and Abantabash. Okay, Skanda Sam, okay, Nakululim. Lana Jacobin, Aguia Luguti, Bas Kulunga Kulungo will pose. About Kulumango Gulichala, Bafundi Sin, Chutilia Kazijachal, Napastang and Jabina Massima Makuga Bekov. Cocoyot in Chal, by a humble mass of was Gugu to Chala Zonkanos of Tongabong. Tabonga Mam Kaula, Honorable Mpiti. Thank you, Acting Acting Chair. Um, I'd like to to greet our honourable members as well as the the NYDA, and also like to welcome the the Deputy Minister to the Portfolio Committee. And we we trust that we will have a very great uh, working relationship going forward. Just a number of points on my side, uh, Deputy Chairs, just firstly to appreciate the, the presentations that were made by the board members, um, and particularly to also appreciate the comprehensive presentation by the Deputy Chair, which I think really was, was quite comprehensive and um, you know, quite clear about what has been taking place um, within the NYDA. But, just a number of points on my side that I, I, I'd like to raise. You know, while, while I was listening to presentations, you know, I appreciate the fact that a lot of the work that has taken place within the NYDA has really uh, been focused on making sure that there's a footprint. Um, you know, there's quite a number of events that have taken place throughout the country that has involved uh, you know, the board members and uh, the work that they've been doing. But I just wanted perhaps through the, the, the chairperson of the board to, to understand what type of work has taken place in terms of systematic changes to the NYDA. Um, I think it's really great that we, we, we have events on the ground that we are engaging uh, with different stakeholders across the country. But I'm wondering what type of systematic changes are happening. Um, you know, there, there's a number of issues that we've consistently raised within the portfolio committee to the NYDA, particularly on how it as an institution uh, continues to run in ways in which uh, are not necessarily benefiting young people. And I'll give you an example. Um, you know, in the last portfolio committee, when we met with the NYDA, we spoke about um, the, the portfolio of job placements. Now, we identified and pointed out very clearly to the NYDA that there seems to be quite a challenge uh, with, within that portfolio, uh, within you know, different NYDA offices. Job placements 
are not happening at the rate that we would want to see. Um, and if you look at the, the quarter that we are currently discussing, you know, we noted, for example, um, in, in Limpopo, there were only three job placements in the Eastern Cape, there were only 17 job placements in, in quarter three. And you can run through other provinces and you see quite low numbers. And, you know, when I, when I visited NYDA offices, one of the things that I really picked up as a, quite a challenge was that particular aspect. So what type of interventions have taken place to circumvent the fact that the job placement portfolio is not working? I think that's quite clear. Uh, I think to have you know, hundreds of CVs being submitted to the NYDA by young people to find uh, job opportunities and to only have a turnaround of only two in the case of Limpopo is quite concerning. So what exactly are the interventions that are being put in place in that particular aspect? Because I think what we are seeing here is that, you know, there's, there's definitely a challenge there and there's something that needs to be done. And one would have hoped that, you know, the chairperson would have spoken about how they have put in plans in place to really deal with that particular issue. Um, now, one would have to obviously dissect the problem and understand why, you know, is the market not, not speaking to the skills that, you know, is within the database um, or for whatever reason. Um, I think we need to understand that so that we are able to put in place things that would assist um, because that is a very important uh, portfolio. Uh, you know, young people are, are really, particularly those in rural areas who might not have Wi-Fi connection, might not have internet connection and might perhaps uh, look at handing in their CV to that directorate as a means in which they can receive assistance uh, can look to this particular place to, to really look at it as something that can be, can be handled. Another example is, again, the market linkages. I, I, I don't hear any type of uh, work that has been done around that. I've been raising this for the past four years. I'm continuing to raise it now. Um, you know, what type of conversations are happening with the private sector on this particular issue? Because one thing that we know is that young people do have ideas, young people do have products, do have services uh, that they are doing within their communities and are looking for a space and a gap within the market in which they can take their products and their services to a broader you know, market. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to understand what, what work has been done in this particular you know, uh, um, aspect, because market linkages are fundamentally important because when you look at the long-term return on these particular initiatives, you understand that once a young person is able to expand their business, they're able to create more job opportunities for other people. Um, and so when we don't necessarily look at these particular examples and simply focus perhaps on having dialogues and discussions and conversations, um, you know, they are great, but they don't really give us a return on what we, we want to see, which is we want to see young people being able to find employment and being able to create employment for, for, for others and create job opportunities for others. And so my concern at this point is, you know, we, we might be too focused on the cosmetic aspect of the NYDA rather than dealing with systematic challenges that continue to, to, to you know, to continue. Um, you know, I also wonder whether the board has thought about, you know, looking at the institution as a whole and seeing um, from, from a systematic point of view, uh, what can be done to change the NYDA so that it becomes more effective um, in, 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 in what its mandate is. You know, I mean, you know, we, we, we have had the NYDA that has been carrying on in the same vehicle that previous boards have, have used. We know that that same institution has not been favorable to young people. Young people have not seen the NYDA as an institution that has been assisting them. So I do think that at some point, the board needs to come together and say to itself, what from an institutional perspective do we need to change? What from an institutional perspective do we need to look at 
uh, to to sort of reframe and 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 perhaps look at a, a different framework in which to make the NYDA um, more more effective to to deliver its mandate, and and so that institutional perhaps an institutional review is something that would be worthwhile to look at. Uh, so that the, the, the current institution moves with the times of, of where our country is, moves with the times of the fact that we have the highest unemployment rate amongst young people in the country, the fact that industries that were, were, were you know, employment heavy previously are no longer flourishing in the way that you know, they, they, they should. And there's potential for other industries in which the NYDA could perhaps uh, divert its energies and divert its its you know its work to to ensure that young people find find jobs, um, you know. And we've we've given these suggestions to the NYDA on a number of occasions. We've spoken about um, you know the, the 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 green economy, cannabis, um, and the potential that it has uh, for young people to find jobs. And so. I, I do want to say that there needs to be some form of work that needs to be done behind the scenes, other than a cosmetic aesthetic viewpoint of how the NYDA is, is on the ground. I think we need to take it a step further um, because these changes will be long-term and will, will really help uh, young people going forward. Um, I also wanted to just raise something that I, I found very interesting that you know, the department uh, attended the United Nations uh, status of women um, in New York. And I was quite surprised to see that the NYDA was not part of the, the delegation. Um, and I was just interested to know, you know, what was the reason for that? Because there was a session that took place there that required, you know, young people to speak and, you know, I was just taken aback that, you know, the department would, you know, ask, for example, Dr. Benice to speak in that particular platform, when in fact, in my view, the, the youth, youth development directorate within the department, uh, in my view, does nothing for young people. Uh, completely, you know, is, you know, you can ask them now what they do and they don't do anything. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's very strange for me that at a platform like that, a directorate that is pretty much useless is there representing young people when we do have an institution like the NYDA, I think is something that we need to, to understand going forward. Um, again, I remain concerned about the relationship of the NYDA and the department, uh, particularly through the directorate of Dr. Bernice. I do feel that there is much to be desired in that relationship. Um, I do think that we have seen in the past couple of months how the department has tried to uh, basically, you know, uh, claim, you know, performance that they have not done. And perhaps maybe the deputy minister can come in and uh, explain how that would work in the future, because we, we do not want the department to, to claim victories that it's not their own. We want the department to do its own work. Uh, the NYDA, it's its own institution and entity. And I think they must run the work and the mandate that they have without the, the department's youth directorate trying to, to own those victories. And I think that was very clear to me at the, the UN uh, engagement. Um, just to go to the presentation of the deputy chairperson, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad to hear of all the, the you know, the selections of young people to go on different trips that have taken place. But again, I want to ask how exactly are these young people being selected? Uh, how are young people in the country being, you know, made aware of these opportunities for them to, to also be able to partake? You know, I follow the, the NYDA on social media, on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, and I've never ever seen um, you know, these opportunities being made available on these platforms. So how exactly do they get advertised? How do young people know that they should apply for them? I think it's fundamentally important that that aspect is, is, is very much improved in my view. 
Um, moving on, uh, um, my interim chairperson. Uh, you know, we've we've obviously, and I've I've put a question to the department uh, previously uh, around the National Youth Service and the fact that the National Youth Service continues, in my view, to not uh, deliver on um, what it promised. And so it is a concern to me to see that number one, departments across 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 government are failing to implement the National Youth Service. What type of uh, uh, engagement is the NYDA doing with departments who are clearly not performing in ensuring that the NYS is successful, uh, that the NYS is, is actually being implemented fully because one thing we do understand, and I think we all understand that, that the work of youth development is not just the work of the NYDA, but is the work of government as a whole. And so when you see ministers and deputy ministers attending NYDA engagements simply just to speak without any core deliverables or any core uh, um, understandings of what they are going to implement within their departments, then it's pointless to have them speak at these events. Because if they are there to just speak on their jackets and you know, uh, build their brands and their profiles, then they are not doing anything for young people. They are simply just there for themselves. And so one thing that we really need to know is that when these ministers and deputy ministers come to these events, they must commit they must commit their departments to ensuring that they implement the work of youth development, that they do the work of youth development. And of course, we see the numbers. Um, you know, when you look at the National Youth Service numbers and you see uh, what the percentages are, it's they're very low. You, you look at Northern Cape, 3%, Northwest, 4%, Free State, 4%, Pumalanga, 6%. I mean, you see that they are not doing the work. So what engagement has the chairperson done with these departments to say, guys, you guys are not doing what you are supposed to doing. You guys are failing to, to assist young people in this country. What are your interventions? What are your measures that you're going to put into place to ensure that these programs are successful, to ensure that young people get these opportunities and this development? Because the statistics as they stand show that you are failing us, you are failing us. So the NYDA must be the one to challenge um, um, ministers and deputy ministers and departments as a whole um, to, 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 you know, to, to implement the work that they are supposed to do. And I think that for me is really disappointing because you know, it's great as the deputy chairperson has said, they, their engagements have been attended by high level politicians but with zero commitment to the work that needs to be done, for me, that is a meaningless uh, exercise um, in a whole. So we must look at strengthening the transversal approach. And perhaps that is where the, the, the department should play a much broader role than what it has in ensuring that these engagements with the various departments is strengthened with the relationship of the NYDA. And the work that the youth the youth directorate of the department through Dr. Benice should be doing is actually assisting in that in that particular aspect instead of trying to put you know indicators for the NYDA to perform. Um, that is the work that they should be doing. It's actually building those engagements and making sure that they are holding these departments to account for their failure for 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 not implementing what what young people are expecting them to implement. Look, I've always said that I, I, I'm, I'm very much in support of uh, programs around mental health because we do see a very, very uh, uh, huge crisis around that particular issue. As unemployment increases, so does mental health and depression and anxiety amongst young people increase. And so we must in every way ensure that we, we do find clear programs that will be able to assist young people in that regard. Um, in a way in which we are able to circumvent uh, the numbers of suicide, which continue to increase uh, in our country and which continue to affect uh, young people uh, um, quite, quite strongly. And then I, I think just lastly, what I will say is that, you know, we have to 
have a long-term view approach to the NOIDA. And I think if this board wants to have a long lasting uh, impact to young people in South Africa, they have to look at what's not working right now in the NYDA. Um, and that means looking at the institution as a whole and finding the gaps that can really be beneficial in the long term for young people. Uh, looking at different things. I mean, you know, I remember quite, quite strongly the, the deputy chair when we interviewed her spoke quite strongly about maritime uh, uh, opportunities that are not actually being tapped into in this country by young people, but have so much potential. And, and so I'm wondering how exactly do we develop those particular programs around industries that are going to be big in the next five to 10 years and being able to ensure that we, we, we pump in support in those particular areas so that we start creating these new industries that we want to see as young people. Right. We, we know that other industries we know with mining, mining is no longer a big employment industry or sector for us in South Africa, but we can already forecast what those industries are going to be. And so we need to start acting in a way in which we, we are preemptive of the industries that are going to be big uh, industries like, you know, IT industries like, you know, everything is digital at this point. Um, so we need to be preemptive in our approach um, in order to really grow these industries in as much as possible. Um, and, and of course, the communication angle is very important, as uh, um, Ms. Pearl Pillay said. Uh, that is one thing that I've always said, that you have to have a good communications model uh, that can be able to, to firstly deal with perceptions that young people have around the NYDA, because you have a long way to go regarding what young people see the NYDA as. Young people still feel that the NYDA is not working, um, is not performing, is not delivering. And of course, uh, the exercise that we did today of the work that you guys are doing is, a, is an important one. It might seem very redundant and, and a bit annoying, but it's an important one because young people will only start to see the NYDA move once they understand what roles are board members playing, what type of work are board members doing in order for them to also start to see that perhaps um, this view or this perception is something that is not correct or is something that I, I might need to reconsider going forward. You know, we, we definitely need to do a lot of work around that. So my point is really to say, systematically, we need to do more work and start to move away from a cosmetic aspect and approach to ensure that the, the, the long lasting impact has a high return for young people in this country. Thank you, uh, Interim Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable PT. I'm happy that both the DM and uh, Dr. Bernice are here to touch on some of the most important issues that you've raised around the relationship and the relations between uh, the department as well as the NYDA. I think it's uh, something that we really need to get clarity on and um, see how one interacts with the other. We will then request um, Honorable Nobo to yes. make his contributions. Thank you, uh, Acting Chair, and greetings to the Honorable Members uh, to the Deputy Minister and to the NYDA. Uh, Chairperson, my question is on the work that the NYDA has done in the disability sector. I know that previously the NYDA has told us that they will be forming strategic partnerships with the NGOs or organizations in the disability sector. But during their presentation, I think that they only mentioned disability once when the chair of the board was presenting. So I just want to find out more about the work that the NYDA has been doing or the board has been doing in, in, in the disability sector and if they have been able to reach more young persons with disabilities. And also just to find out if they are building those partnerships with the NGOs or organizations in the disability sector. Thanks, Chief. Uh, 
uh, we will then request to Mam Sonti, and then uh, after Mam Sonti, it's Mam Sengwa. Mam Sonti? Dibule le chepesi nwelanga. Dibule se department. Dibule se imemba se committee. Dibule se no secretary betu ngobunjalo. Um, I chepesini anduzu bamte. Uh, because uh, all kabam sebe nyatele kakulu la pobe ndizo nyatele kona kakulu kakulu umamu kaulu chepe sini uh, net department ubuke vengu ubuka njile kuincha yetu genwa yoku ngaba kwe misebez abandwa na betu batole matave abanye babo batesa Batengisa imizimba. Befundile. Kotwa. Ngoba nje. Akufike lelwa kubo. Kakulu kakulu. Glenda baye NYTA. Ekutetwa ngayo. Chepe sine abafike leli. Kakulu kakulu. Kuinda o. Zasez lalim. Kwi rural areas. Kala ndisicho. Nga o onge amatlash. Ni akuluma kakuche. Kotwa futa kwe neli nto. Usasoko ulwa incha yetu. Jengba se nchilo ndati kwe rural areas kuwez. Ezi zi ndo zanze kezi dolo pini kakulu kakulu. Ezi ndi. Abandu anabetu. Maya soko ula ezi lani. Magu zita gamizwa. Magu ndio yonke. Abana anzo ndicho. Inda ozo ukla lila mabala. Abana anto. Ansa teti nge skills kunzima. Dine experience. Nteta ngenda agenda wengkla la kuyo. Upon corner, my TV in Northwest, Kunzi Makobi, a shell in Jabanto and a bit of Comsevins, and satating our project. Winda by ye, 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 let me greet the minister in her absentia and honorable deputy. Thank you very much. Let us, one would look forward to take this department up. And greetings the board of NYTA, as well as the honorable members of the portfolio committee. Chairperson, I have been partly covered by Mam Kaula and Honorable Pete, but I have a number of issues to the board. If I can take the board to KZN, I don't know what is happening to the NYDA board because there is nothing, nothing, nothing reported about KZN where the KZN have things to do. KZN have nothing to do to grasp from the NYDA because no one goes there down to the rural areas where people are there. Uh, NYDA is disappointing us in KZN. In terms of education, many graduates are not working just because of lack of guidance even where they go to the universities, no one will guide them that this curriculum, you cannot take this curriculum because it is out of order because of one, two, three. The NYTA, NYTA is not visible in the, uh, in the university in the times of 
registration to assist uh, our students, to assist our learners. The results of that, there are graduates who are sitting at home because there is no work. Department of Education doesn't want to uplift them, doesn't want to take them into a smaller causes so that they could do something. There is a lack of guidance in our students. To, uh, or there's a lack of guidance in terms of what curriculum should they. They spend time learning nothing, but one would assist them if there is a proper guidance in the NYDA. Instead, when they are out, the Department of Education said they are out of order. What is the is that the reason why our children are not working? That because they are learning something which is out of order? Is that the reason why the unemployment of the graduates is that because education is not assisting them? Let us ask, may I plea the NYDA to go to the Department of Education and ask the guidance of these children. Now they take grade 12, going back, going to school as an assistant teacher instead of assisting these graduates. Now, graduates in our country, is that an insult to our children? NYDA, please guide our children, guide our students, guide these mothers who go to Mashonisa and Batatimali Bayofundisa and Venua Lokobata and Engan Zabongobatue, Zifundin Dengeko relevant. Thank you, Chairperson. See, see, Abonga Kuluma. A gamma contributions are called also Nimbuzo Yako or Ibuzil. I think, honorable members, I'm not seeing any other hands of uh, honorable members who wish to engage on the reports. Honorable Piri, uh, honorable Marego. Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, let me start by acknowledging the presence of the DM, um, the presence of the board, yeah, NYDA, and the presence of um, the department as a whole. I don't have much to say, but just to acknowledge and accept the presentation made. Um, and a lot of questions have been raised by, raised by our colleagues, but just to emphasize and read, uh, other members said to say, you know, we still have a long way to go. We still need um, uh, the services uh, going down to our rural areas. Uh, and as much as we want empowerment and the threat of um, the country not doing well in terms of your unemployment and, and small businesses. But Chair, nevertheless, must not just make preamos like we are doing a speech, but I think most of the questions that were raised by colleagues, uh, they covered me. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Piri. Mam Sonti, no Mam Sengo, are those legacy hands or are they new hands? 
it's a new hand, uh, Mam Jolene. Okay. All right. Imagine, Mam. So deep, before you, let's take Honorable Pony, and then uh, we'll we'll take you after Honorable Pony. No, 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 Chair. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Okay, hold so on a second. To come in, as I've indicated earlier, Chair, that I think I'm on my way to the airport. I might uh, cut off or whatsoever. Thank you for the opportunity. Good morning to all the members on the platform and DM and all uh, members from NYTA. I think, Chair, I quite look at Naku Etelele, Zikiredite, Maluk, Ose Abu, Abamo platform. Report here NYDA. But let me also kiss this about as a chairperson who lebuha report as from individual members of the board. I think Iribon Sahore Honali Diro E Diruanke Maloko about here NYDA. As we previously said that. Uh, we need an NYDA that is at work and reaching out. But I believe that as much as they must be out there. I think but a lot more still needs to be done, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, as we know, I think they, they are from the report and as I've been listening, they've highlighted some areas, provinces, they, they have been true. But I want to emphasize on the issue of forest. Some provinces are very vast, are very vast in that uh, um, going to the main city, uh, towns or cities, it's good, but there are vast and uh, far flung areas that where members or let me say the youth in our country need also the services that NYTA. So for that to me is a tata, but to baro na ba kumakai akhakala akhakala from many services that are not reaching them, so that uh, NYTA can reach out there. But I want to commend them for the work that they have done, and I think that it shows progress. It shows a, a hope for many young people in our community. A E B Z it laba fitlele la wherever they are. So I would just encourage them to do more and make sure that all the services reach uh, uh, our young people in the communities no matter where they are like the president normally says that we are leaving no one behind let them include all the young people as those also live with those young people also with disability also to be heard and to be listened to and also to be assisted when needs be Chairperson, on the issue of communication in terms of radio stations and so on, what I would like to say is the issue of uh, uh, different languages also, because we know that uh, some areas, uh, it's easy to reach them through their local or community. Also, people appreciate information that comes to them when it's in their language uh, or their home-based language or ilingo, like others would say. So it makes them uh, also uh, easy to understand and follow these things, but to target also local community stations, not the major only radio stations within our communities. Because some Bo Metro, your Kaya FM, your Power FM don't reach those uh, outlying areas very far from the cities. So uh, that would be my input, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Marekwa. Uh, we'll then take the hand, Mam Sonti, followed by Mam Kaul. Thank you, Mam Choli, Diabolela. The then I have an apology, ne? As I am being a little deputy minister, because I am the local, and I think she's a part of us in this uh, meeting today. I'm so sorry. Windows. Se abulela. I think ukolo ukolo lo ako ulvile. Mama. Mama ni lebonga zangu yeye na ne. Eh, we. Eh, 
Okot to be like a chapes in Wam, Gifuna, who we beg a straight in the Bayetis April. And Dinom Tuana were eighteen years up, a watin and Kalaku, your what twenty six Emma TV in the Northwest. Lomduan only eighteen years in Dombazana, Ucheli Pansi, Akana Wilche, Akaho, Akatoli Necrant, Abazaliba, Kabazuli, all over, Abnanta by Tola. So on the Telusis of the department, which in Genele Lingosia. She is not one only party. And the specify because Mandy Shangan and I go back home each and every time. The Abule like she was making on Niga Iltuba. The Abule la Mam Sonti, Mam Kaula. The Bonga chair assess those who are at Uyaju. I am in Tang being a little up a minister. Cotton on being a little ashes in the mangy bonus, a hammer, one man, and some being a little, Galila and some being a little. A gitimina lana, a corner engine to lana, but Bangati, no go some one baga NYTA, the potel up. Go, but I will very see Fisel and you go to get it all up again. Eh, nana kona la skulu makona nge inga na makala unyag. La inga do chotama university aisabizo atwa apply online. No mazia chotguta zgoa zungen. Eh, kune stelo. Kune stelo la. Engi abatuma nga manyamazu na yu ministers wegashe. Kuna ma college aye kona la kuse uzulu government angazi kwezinye indawo lakhi o ogqikazo Adam si Apris Boshi njalo njalo angazi namanye ama province aye khona yini lawo ma lawo ma lawo ma colleges aye kwazi ukusiza umuntu onswempu ongenayo imali yengane yokuthi igibele iyohlale university yayikwazi ingane kusuka ekhaya iwokhe iye khona kuyimanje ingane eziningi kufanele abe ziye ma university ibhatse kahle ezinye bengiyibona ngisho kwamaphumula azikwazi because kukude abazali abanazi imali eh henye into ewumphaka ukufuna unika ukuthi Go by my abon to my university. Iya tuala inga ne tina inga ne li go by bon abagwas apply wuti. Eh inga ne zinga aga eh zelo ngo nyago tile zo be zinga aga zi eskole ngo nyago tile zo be zinga aga zi high school ngo nyago tile zo be zinga aga zi ma university college injalo injalo. Why banga vulige la ma la ma la ma colleges aye konana. Ogunye and Funugu Zele Lalan. Ye lent over to Emma Kay and Cossasan. I am a band to Bacona, E. N. Y. T. A. Bays or Enda Binta Bangayas. And the banner is Banesing and the Les Eltang and Pil as this a bull. Ogwa Matina Bona, because I get come to Bacuku Zelaya Makai. Bazulazing and a Z. If I born a Roguti, Bagwas born a Bahole is social grant. Noti e ukuthi sinakekelwe ivini ezinye uthola nangempilo eziyona noma magogo ubona udale ezingane zigezwa ngoba mhlambe ethuwa kufuna kuvuselelwa i social grant yazo i disability grant yazo i NYDA kufanele sibabone besabalala baze bayofika nalapho nalapho laba abantu babaqoqa badisable emakhaya imhlabi khona ilen Bagwas, put about a keller is sent, and Abazo when the corner, a seven zezanda, Abazo was when the corner, a ma craft work, Bali, me bafu, and Gobana Bantu Yaba, but disabled. But I got this by Beko as a disabled young in Minangia Tail, Uguti. E NYTA. Kunga be into Gemnandi, Ikamale English, NYTA, but go to Umpaga to a tongue agassiz again. Lago nom keys on a land, I'm chambersing and amatis a bully company like I'm chamber draw four light a win. I shot in Gentella Yoguta Legalelo, Abana Banas on ship at Kulumange youth. As my bonus, the corner must tint the sober combis. 
Emakaya, Umtabu Konulen, Abazo for Bavula Massent, Sibodu Nai and White Aya Sevens, Yam Tons and Nominister Lonely to Lab. Go by Lando Yendab, Jalo Lokurunda Betio, Ip Sungab, Yiko in Tetumuntum to Mazat Mamkau and Monange Gifundil, Cotra and Gikubazerina Foot, Cotra and Gina Lutang Nagua because Ninja, as quas Pilatin and Gemalet is a Pilat Grant because Nagis is the less named in it. Go, Babazan as a Nabo, says Sizwa is the less in Ganel is it. Giatela Bagit, I lend the in Patuso Sis, Tinusta, and Mandabat is able. Mabega to Kang and the Kuluma Nabo now. In young, I yonk about it as an omunate Kuluman, the Major Mam Kalam Nankatel, Aou Kumun Dang and Gongozanga Kona, Gingongozaga Lotta, Ozong Sandel, Yatik Lan, Ebo. So Manjan and Pella Pellangas, just with Funaji Motor, as it was legal, Batata, Baham, the Bagma Sport, Baham, the Bowens and Ezozin. Angili, Patinianya, NYTA Musan Bam Sobiso. NYTA, Musan Kabange Laga Kool Abandabasa Matulopin. Again, Tatel, I'm a shiner and then pissing now, man, and one niggas, man. I'm a shiner, I'm seizing a lutum to me, I'm a gum fun lamb bacon. Winding a peg and paratini. A band of another my project. Niggas, they born a lazy man. Who they born a benz and umsebins. Never landed in a con good is Zuenza and Angel, Akbanama NPO, NGOs, Yalunjal, Yabong. As Kalamusha, Abus Gwenzimina, Nenzo Sis, and the cousin Jempa Shagun and Tombazan, it is a bull. Ea Hamba, your keeper is in Bienzu Cret twelve. Langane and Gas Gwenzagalani, Ikuba Segile Manch, I think Ben Combisa Nes Tombezai. Now your Italo Siso, Loguti Iguazi, Ugutola, Ilegalele. Iperele luti ine ngayenza. Aina zong shi imadzo kutuma kubegele pambili. Zamani nisonde le tina. Sizo nchela tina. Jowa siko na singo honorable. We are not here to play. We are here to work. And wonga ma province. Aya sasko na tsonel. Ndiya bonga. E, Siya bonga kakulu ma mkawula. E, si, Siya guzwa ma. E, Ukuti ngempela ukuluma. Gentungu or Ibona, Yokubanta Bash. So, Telage, honorable members uh, and the chairperson and deputy chairperson will hand over to you for the responses. We'll also give an opportunity to Dr. Benis, and thereafter, we'll give an opportunity for UDM to make her reflections. But uh, chairperson and, and deputy chair, I know that I have said this and I wish to repeat it since this day has been dedicated to looking closely at the work of the individual board members. We really commend the work that you have done. We see that there are various activities that uh, you are currently engaged in as, 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 um, as, as board members individually and collectively so. We are seeing and noting your stakeholder engagements, which says that you are able to engage and uh, hopefully you are reaching out to the young people through these stakeholder engagements. We are also noting the different sites that you are visiting, uh, the different uh, strategy sessions that you are involved in, and also the different uh, platforms which you are addressing through invitation by other relevant uh, stakeholders making the, 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 the keynote addresses in those platforms. There is an array, array of, of, of activities which, which you have presented before us as a portfolio committee and we really commend that because it shows that you are on the ground. I wish to say this because I've said it before that having noted and commended the work that you are doing, it's important for us to get a better understanding on then what becomes the strategic outcomes of, of, of such engagements and activities. But equally so, it is important to align these activities that you are doing uh, with the reporting that you are, are doing as the NYDA too. 
uh, the portfolio committee. We wish that they be in line with your strategic outcomes of the NYDA so that we are able to get a ben better understanding of uh, the, the programs um, of the NYDA being in line with the activities that you are making. Because it's one thing to be out and, 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 and conducting, you know, uh, programs, but it's another if these programs are in line with the indicators and the targets of the National Youth Development Agency. That is the most important. And I wish uh, um, uh, in the chairpersonship that we are able in future to, to structure our reports in such a way that will make it clearer for us that the reporting that you are doing is under which target, is under which in indicator in, in, in your APP as the National Youth Development Agency. I will then hand over to you, Chairperson, and then we'll request the members of the board to respond, and then we'll give to the department, uh, firstly, Dr. Penis, and then lastly, we'll give to the D Deputy Minister. Over to you, uh, uh, NYDA. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Chairperson, Acting Chairperson of today. Uh, to the honorable members um, I will then start honorable members by perhaps responding to some of the overarching uh, questions um, that the honorable members would have raised um, on on a consecutive or consistent basis. Um, one, I'll first start by touching on our rural outreach. Um, and just to perhaps um, appraise or, or remind the honorable members that we currently do have a rural strategy that was uh, developed and adopted. And in that strategy, it devises various outreach initiatives that are specifically targeted at um, the rural communities or young people residing in your rural communities. And it suffice to say that our work in so far as the board has been deliberate in ensuring that we align our work um, and ensure that uh, indeed no young person is left behind, particularly those in the rural areas. Um, but just to perhaps then put flesh to, to that statement and just to touch on just some of the initiatives that we've done um, on, 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 on the rural communities. One, um, just to appraise the honorable members that we are currently in a partnership with the Mlambo Foundation. Uh, we, um, the NYDA, in partnership with your MTN, your HP, IDEA, your Saibono, Prime Starts, and various private um, partners are currently um, working specifically with the Mlambo Foundation in the Limpopo Vembe district, um, wherein we are trying to make ICT more accessible to young people in those rural areas. Um, we also want to just appraise the honorable members that we are also currently looking at possible partnerships with the MTN Foundation. Um, and within that foundation, honorable members, what we are doing there is that, for instance, in that foundation, there is the MTN Skills Academy, and I'll just maybe touch on that. Uh, when we are that particular foundation, the work that they are doing is linked to the work that is currently done in my office where we are currently collaborating with the Department of Social Development. Uh, we are in a partnership with the tech, with the tech company called Techno Mobile. Um, and we've developed programs that are making ICT more accessible to the girl child um, from child-headed homes, um, as well as youth that have been orphaned because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And most importantly, and, um, into, and, and, and specifically, we are working with youth that are residing in, in rural areas. Um, but in addition to that, um, I was just trying to pull up a, a slide Oh yes. So currently, with our MT, the, the the current discussions with MTN is that we have identified possible areas of collaboration, and I'll just speak to them specifically. One is that we want to ensure that indeed our platform, our ERP system, is zero rated. 
Um, we have more than 250,000 young people that are currently utilizing the system, uh, but the cost of data remains high. And so we are in discussions with MTN to ensure that um, they are able to provide us with those services um, that will enable even the young person in a rural area to access our ERP system. Um, but what we also want to do with the MTN Foundation is um, look at youth entrepreneurship and through that we want to support young people who are starting their own ventures in the telecommunication sector, uh, which will include end-to-end -end support, including connections uh, to MTN, uh, to the MTN ESD programs. We want to explore your, your collaboration so far as skills development is concerned. Um, so with the skills development program and the digital skills, um, which we are envisioning to be done on a pay for performance method, and we are in discussions with MTN to consider future skills pipeline in that regard. Um, equally with the MTN, we are looking at our National Youth Service Program um, to when we want MTN to consider um, which of the current programs that currently exist within the NYS they would want to support uh, from a skills uh, from a skills point of view. Uh, when they will have an additional intake of young people, um, they would provide us uh, with devices and free data so that young people in that are um, that are enrolled in your national youth service program are able to utilize. Um, we are also um, linked to MTN again. We are in discussion around the, post, the, the establishment of a youth enterprise incubator or a digital skills hub of some sort. Um, and with this, we wanted to have an appreciation that uh, infrastructure is always a long-term invest, investment that will provide ongoing benefits to different generations of youth. So we are in discussion with MTN um, for the establishment of a digital hub. Yet again, this is all still linked to ensuring that um, young people in the rural areas um, have access to IC team. Uh, we are also having discussions with MTN around how they can assist um, that our design put impetus to our disability strategy. Um, and in partnership with the MTN SA Foundation, they've got learners with special needs, um, special education needs program. We want to explore possible collaboration with linking learners existing in the basic education sector with the NYD initiatives targeting youth living with disabilities. Um, so, so that then speaks to our, our reach in so far as the rural communities are concerned. Um, then there was a question, or oh, lastly linked to that, I think it's important then for the honorable members that to also have an appreciation that particularly Youth Month was critical for us as the board to understand the various challenges facing young people, um, you know, not just in the Eastern Cape, but with a specific focus on um, young people residing in rural areas. And um, the board has engaged and continues to engage young people across all provinces, um, particularly those that are in rural areas, um, as, as was also outlined by board member Avela. Um, then there was a question that was raised around why the NYDA was not part of the UN delegation. Um, and in response to that, honorable members, uh, we had submitted our apology um, indicating that the, the, the summit took place during the same time as um, our dialogue, which was the Nelson Mandela Youth Dialogue, which was a presidential initiative. Um, that event took place on the same date as the UN program. So we unfortunately could not participate in that and we, as we had to prioritize the dialogue. Um, then there was a question that was raised on the selection of young people on international trips. Um, suffice to say, honorable members, that opportunities are made available on all our platforms uh, we, where we encourage young people to apply and there's a rigorous shortlisting process that follows. Um, this question was raised particularly on the Russia trip and we would have responded to say what was the process that was outlined in so far as shortlisting those particular young people. But perhaps if then um, honorable members feel that that information was not sufficient, we will gladly uh, provide that in writing to the honorable members. Um, then there was questions, there were questions around uh, market linkages. And as we continuously um, present to the portfolio committee 
Uh, we currently have a system in place, which is the National Pathway Management Network, which provides learning and earning opportunities, as well as creating a single entry point for unemployed youth to view, as well as access opportunities in the economy, as well as a range of support services. Uh, currently, we've got the Department of, or, or rather, this the, the National Pathway Management Network is a what we call in a network of networks that connects all existing networks serving unemployed young people. Now, this network creates and aggregates learning and earning opportunities and creates a single entry point for young people to have access to opportunities in the economy, as well as a range of support services. It addresses um, barriers young people are faced with, as well as providing them with active support to enable pathways into the labor market. Now, the Department of Labor um, leads the establishment of this network and working, working closely with partnerships um, such as the presidency, as well as ourselves, the NYDA, the Department of Higher Education and Training, Harambe, Youth Employment Accelerator, Youth Employment Service. Um, we currently have more than 3 million young people that are registered on this network and more than um, 10,000 opportunity holders on this particular network. And just perhaps then to highlight what have been some of the successes of this network in so far as creating market link linkages for young people. Um, as already stated, the network currently has over 3 million young people that are registered. Um, we have about 500,000 young people registered on our ESSA system and the 3 million that are registered are on our SA youth platform. We have about, um, as indicated, about uh, 10,000 opportunity holders that are listed on our platforms. We have over 300,000 uh, young people that have been secured in earning opportunities through the SA Youth Platform. And um, just to aggregate those that have, pro that have received opportunities, 69% of the opportunities were filled by women and um, about 30,000 young people received non-financial support from the, the agency. And lastly, about 75% of young people that received this non-financial support um, live in either rural or township areas. Now, on the questions that were raised about around our disability work and what work we are doing so far as targeting that particular cohort, um, as the NYDA, we felt that it was essential to identify as well as to be able to eliminate barriers to participation and develop economic opportunities for young people um, that are living with uh, disabilities. Um, and currently, we, it was therefore imperative that we played a role as one of the partners um, that we have identified. And that particular partner was the Disability Connect and we were part of the Disability Career Expo that took place last year. Now the Career Expo aimed at promoting as well as enabling employment opportunities for persons living with disabilities. And the event brought together about 1,200 learners, graduates and entrepreneurs living with disabilities. And we had more than 30 corporate ex exhibitors that showed that showcased their various opportunities ranging from bursaries, skills development programs and jobs to invite um, to the invited guests. And um, this particular partnership is one that we will continue during our term um, just to ensure that um, young persons living with disabilities do not get left behind. Um, so those were just my brief responses to the questions that were raised by the honorable members. And um, I'll then uh, request the deputy chairperson um, to respond to some of those questions. And thereafter we'll open up to the board members. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair and honorable members. I think I'll just touch on a few areas, um, but I'm largely covered by the chairperson of the board. There was a question in relation to the recruitment process of some of the work that we do on behalf of the board. And I would want to respond to it using the scenarios that we would have presented within the report. The agricultural summer school that took place um, at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, um, applicants had to apply to the university for admission to the program first because the program 
was free of charge. The only thing that the NYDA had to do was to support the young people with regards to the traveling and accommodation. So there is that blended approach that we have that the university would then select the candidates, then give us a short list, then we're able to choose among the short list those young people that would have also applied to the NYDA for sponsorship. We can confirm that we, we use all of our social mediums to communicate these opportunities. We definitely do agree that more can be done, especially because young people in far-flung rural areas might not be able to have access to a post, for example, that you might put on your Facebook or Twitter or even Instagram. So there is definitely a need for us to find more creative ways to ensure that we integrate young people from um, far-flung areas to participate in some of the work that we do. But I think the positive spin out of this as well was that we're able to get young people who participated in the Brazil exchange program, who actually came from predominantly what we would term rural provinces. Um, we had one young woman who came from Limpopo in Atok, um, a participant from Springbok in the Northern Cape, a participant from Brits in the Northwest, as well as from the Free State. So, I think there's definitely more that can be done for us to ensure that the work that we do is widely spread. On the NEMISA recruitment as well, it was also shared on the NYDA social media pages. We're going to be having an intake for the Brazil um, Agricultural Summer School for this, for this year's cohort. And I think listening to the advice that we've been given will definitely make sure that we give ourselves sufficient time to even ensure that we take advantage of the fact that we've got branches that are sitting in all in all districts. So I think what we can be able to do is to also ensure that that information gets to our branches so that even if young people enter the, the branches, you know, just to maybe find out on grant programs, they can also be introduced to some of the programs that we do. Um, the disadvantage with us sitting um, in, in Gauteng is that it's always easier to have access to young people that are sitting in your vicinity. And I think that is criticism that we actually do receive that we need to start ensuring that we look outwardly in how we engage and disseminate um, information. Um, we just also want to comment on the question that was um, raised, I think, Honorable Shengwa, in terms of the work that we might have been doing in KZN. Um, I think in, in bulk of the work that we do in KZN was actually featured in the very first reports that we made um, during our back to school, as well as during the flooding, there was intense work that was done in the KwaZulu-Natal province. But what we can also be able to do is to ensure that as and when we submit the reports, we're able to just also add annexures that just give a detail in terms of the rural areas that we would have, would have visited so that there is a comprehensive um, overview of the work that we do as, as the board. I think we, we can definitely be able to do that, but we can confirm that there is a great deal of work that we are doing in the KwaZulu-Natal province. But of course we are limited um, in, in as far as resources concerned. And what we rely on more often than not is actually our service centers to ensure that in our absence um, as board members, those service centers can be able to go into rural communities. And that's why they are strategically located in districts so that they can be able to have you know, immediate interaction with young people that are within the vicinity instead of having to wait for particular board members to leave um, you know, their place of residence to go into a particular rural area. And I think what we can also be able to do in our, in our comprehensive reporting is to show how different branches actually engage with communities um, that, that, that are in rural and rural areas. There were um, comments and questions that came from Honorable Kaula. Um, I think I just want to apologize for not being extensive in how we presented the Chinese Cultural Center Initiative. Um, that is a collaboration that is not going to be funded at all by the NYDA. So the NYDA is not going to be taking out a cent for that particular collaboration. Um, I think the Chinese Culture Center actually said to us, They've got access to Chinese companies that are already, you know, in the economy, participating in the economy in South Africa. And they are set aside that these Chinese companies, you know, are supposed to have for young people in the main 
And there is also an obligation on their part to ensure that the work that they do benefits not only young people, but South African citizens holistically. So the Chinese culture approached us to say, um, they're going to be running a program and that program has potential to create employment for young people. And they would want us to partner with them in terms of identifying seven certain, you know, certain um, service areas as well as where young people could be located that they can be able to recruit. So our role is not going to be to fund this particular initiative, but rather to be able to assist in terms of the recruitment of these young people that the Chinese um, Culture Center will be recruiting over time. Um, we are yet to finalize the memorandum of understanding, but we just wanted to put on record that the NYDA will not be um, uh, putting in any funds. They will not be using any cent or even giving over money to the Chinese Cultural Center. There was a question that was asked on how young people can be able to access the youth fund that is going to be in Gauteng. Um, and I think um, immediately after, well, the board is going to be sitting um, tomorrow to actually finalize on this. Um, it is our belief that immediately after the board would have satisfied itself that this is a beneficial partnership for young people, will ensure that we communicate with our branches in the Gauteng province. But what we'll also be able to do is just to try and ensure that we circulate the information of this particular partnership to all communities, townships, rural areas within the Gauteng province so that young people can be aware of this opportunity that exists. And I think the board um, through the chairperson has been doing quite a great deal of work in trying to ensure that you have localized youth funds that are in provinces. The chairperson together with the CEO launched the Limpopo Youth Fund, I think a couple of days ago, that is going to be focused and centered for young people in the Limpopo province in particular. So some of this work is also game changing, but we definitely do take note that we need to ensure that more and more young people get to know about the work that we do. And we not only rely on social mediums as a way to communicate, but we ensure that there are various mechanisms that we put in place for those young people that might not have ready and available access to go on to whether it's a Facebook or a website to be able to access some of this information. And I think lastly, I just wanted to, to comment that um, um, on, 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 on the work that we do around um, scarce skills areas, there has been work that has been done around the cannabis and hemp industries. The NYDA hosted an information session and brought different stakeholders on board to communicate and share information and knowledge with young people on how they can be able to have access to these scarce skills and how they can be able to even enter the industry. There is also going to be work that we're going to report on in the fourth quarter around cyber security and how we can be able to ensure that young people get the skills that the economy requires. The unfortunate part is that um, there needs to be a whole of government approach um, and the NYDA might not be able to cover all young people, but I think we do take note that where we're able to cover young people, we're able to ensure that we include the participation of those who might not be able to readily access information in a digital format. And that effort needs to come from, from our side. And I think we do, we do commit ourselves that indeed we'll definitely be um, in a position to make that effort. And as and when we report again, we'll be able to give an up-to-date information on how is it that we've been able to put mechanisms in place to ensure that the work that we do actually reaches young people in those far-flying areas. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chair. And uh, through you, Acting Chairperson, um, I'll allow the board members um, to respond to some of the issues or the questions that were raised by the honorable members. Um, in no particular order, I think the board members can just unmute themselves and uh, respond to the questions that uh, they see best. Thank you. All right. Perhaps um, we all come in. Okay. Yes, yes. 
Um, yes, thanks. I don't think any of the board members um, have anything to respond to. So I'll just maybe ask the CEO and then we'll hand back to yourselves, uh, Honorable Chair. Oh, I see, I see Tulisa's hand is up. Um, perhaps let me let me ask him to respond and then we'll hand over to the CEO afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I was a bit worried with the with with Tulisa not coming in because Mam Kaula asked a specific question around the coffee shop in Florida. Yes, uh, yes, Honorable Chair. Uh, I wanted to allow my other colleagues. Um, Chair, I I think in Kambe Jafisu Kala Mam Kaula ngiti ngikazu tabale award. I award Mam Kaula. Uh, was not given to me specifically. Kwa uh, nomination that the NYTA young AI taller ngoguba in the public sector uh, in company eamgelayo uh, abantu abobili obshuga shugene ne ngwaka work environment kwa zuguti abantu basi sobamgeleki umsebenzo umshega kulo tina nendo esi this is Kaja Kulu Nayangoba, Jenny Kanga and Yabanda Basha. Uba Legi Luguti, Abanda Basha, a Intangonia Bobaz Tolle, Bamuge Legi, a Nomanga twice on a sipis no more batter to go starter, a Bangas told Betwaso, Guy Yonkin Lella. So Ubacona, no winner way to lay award, Quas Nigesa, Ukos, or Kulu Guti, Siso Guaz Guti, a si improve ika kulgazi kuma working conditions e tu na nuguti umsebe nje swe nza ayo e bako na bawa mgele ayo e nge kama nguti e mswe nganga yi e dela gase utabalua yo nga chizo kutuwa usla lo goto kwa nge kono nguti e kono gui ogui awote nge gui na ayo goto wake e mam kaula nga nge nga manga sebe nge me me watu for a 54 bezo nge ngezi awote e kanga ya mgele alo awote masa tu ya kamu and um, that is just much on a lighter note. The, <clears throat> the second thing, Kambang Fuzukulmangayo, Ngabanguti, Mam Kaula's question together with the question raised by Honorable Sengwa, uh, I'm just going to couple it together around the work that we do uh, in Gwazu Natal. Uh, Honorable members, if you look at our previous uh, performance uh, results that we've, we've, um, we've um, presented here, there's quite a lot of work that we do, um, that we make uh, in Guazu Natal. Let me just start from a footprint point of view. Mamu kawalu no mamu shengu wabazo kumbulu kuti ekeza chen guna ma districts au leve. Kula ma districts au leve, nguna ma offices, no magune presence, the NYTA, wow, nine out of 11. The ugushuguti abantu abasha, even as far as uh, emanguze, kumkanya bute. Was Uti Babi Kuni Office and YTA, Abawas Via Glon, Abandabasha, Basopongol, Ezulent, Babas Ubani Office, Abaya Glon, Abandabasha Baso Queen. So Kukona is in the last thing a cocona got to Amatis to Tamabi, Ogu Uti Jenga Manja, Indo, SCS Bin in King and Ayo, Eoguti, Umuzo Vudi Office, Fanelos Buzuguti, Umalini Exo Biza Bonuti, Ulre de Lo. Office, you know, go to Fage, staff, the law office, a Umusu and Zenjalo, Ingarana, any mothers, a Tata who lay a CBs and a Malay service deliver to your fund my operations. So there's always a, 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 a some sort of a debate and a balancing act that we must make between taking money from a, away from grants and from a, um, trainings that we provide, from non business support that we give to young businesses into funding operations. And I think we try and balance. I mean, I know the budget um, to be presented tomorrow uh, speaks about a 90% to 10%, which means only 10% of our resources. Azoya, Kokelena Basebe, Zin, Fandama operations, Kodwa, 90%. Ogu inga inga yogu shaka lulu unye, eshu min, kuzo ya service deliver. Si esizame wa ukin jelu kuti, singa trini, se siba ne stretches bloke. Obvious, masin zenjalo. Kusuguting and my bang and the man, Connie Dowlas and Squaz with the Sibene office, Eli physical, or Woody, Sizozamu and Zangazin in general as the innovative Woody Sibene presence with us now. So, whilst we accept to Woody Connors and Rafiki Connor, Cordua, a Kuning in Bella Esguenza, and Clambe Winja, yeah, one of the questions raised was around the issue of 
abantu abasha basemakhaya and what it is that we get we do with them even the ones that don't particularly pass metric we do not leave them behind and i think i want to highlight a project that the honorable um, acting chair will know very closely from her previous work uh, before she was in this committee, uh, which is a partnership between the NYDA and the Department of Social Development in Guazul Natal, which looks at two centers um, that give skills. They are skill centers. Uh, it's a project run by the Department of Social Development. Uh, one is Estabazin, <clears throat> which is a mangoes. Incidentally, a, a couple of weeks ago, we attended the graduation of one of the groups um, Zabanda Basha, both boys and girls. These are young people who would have been identified but in conflict with the law. Mangi Shonja, Mangi Sangi Shonja. Aba wazangu kato metri ki bangi ne itaka mizweni, bangi na o kuzenu tuala impilo ya boy yanga ha bangi nje. So in social development together with the NYT, Baba Tata, Baba Fage, good uh, training. Eh, hamba iskatches ngange 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 zistupa. Lako na befunda ama critical skills. Lako na getina ukalowa ma skills and discipline who's part of by spoon le si chem paratini ka inogning. Kotwa tina lanjang NYT lasen genela kona kulu guti ku entrepreneurial skills. Siaba fundisa, go pata, no gu tu to gisa ma business ab. Kotwa singa twini la po sitin go busuna si skill. Osu toli lem plan skills a plan being skill so wo. Uh, so, so when you get the electric, electrical skills, basically, it's a good tool skill. So, you can get a good data pack. You can get a good tool. 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 You can we take uh, your suggestion that you, you are making around the need for us to work closely with the agriculture and promoting agriculture, particularly on young people in the rural areas. In the Nelson Mandela Youth Dialogue, which was held a few weeks ago, we met with a, a group of young people who are youth in agriculture in that district of Oartambo. Their deputy, deputy chairperson was present and we got an opportunity to engage with them around the specific issues that are faced with young people in, the, uh, in, in rural agriculture. Uh, and I think the reason why for us to have these engagements is so that we don't sit somewhere uh, in, in the office and think about solutions for young people. We go down to young people, we engage with them, we allow them to guide us into what kind of specific interventions they think we can be able to engage with. And I think we are in a process right now together with some of the interventions that Mr. Mchatubana was mentioning uh, to ensure that we build enough partnerships with the departments um, in provinces and at national responsible for agriculture to promote agriculture, not just as a, as a, 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 a business in the end, but also just as a lifestyle. We do believe that it's important for young people to look at agriculture as a lifestyle, just to run a small program of saying to young people throughout the year, you, you must at least in each household plant four fruit trees, ones that will arrive in, in the four different types of the, of, the year, of, of the year in terms of seasons, which will allow each and every household to have access to at least one type of fruit throughout the year, which is also addresses agriculture, also addresses the food security concerns and the other health benefits around malnutrition and, uh, and some of the um, health um, conditions that our young people are facing. So I do believe that uh, my honorable chair, uh, it is, it, it is with, with that that we are working towards to ensure that young people do get um, access to NYTA services, and some of the services, uh, honorable members, that we provide to young people rely in very large part to resources made available to us by our partners. And it's quite important for us to appreciate some of the work that our partners does. I mean, uh, some of the work that our partners 
uh, allow us to be able to do. And Mam uh, Kaula, the issue on CAO, I take note of it. And CAO is one of those, um, it's a central applications office predominantly in Guazul Natal for other colleagues that uh, may not know about it. It's one of those areas that we constantly engage around between ourselves and the Department of Higher Education. Um, and it's an issue that <clears throat> when we did a career expo in the Amatuba district, um, which is an activity that did not feature here on this particular report because it was restricted between the second and the third quarter, it was important for us to engage with the department with the intention of the department also providing the kind of assistance in unlocking some of the barriers that CEO presents. Uh, but more importantly for us, um, young uh, uh, as young people, we we want to encourage other young people not to also look, only look at institutions of higher learning as universities. I mean, there are twenty five public universities in the in the country, but also explore the spaces of TVET. Also explore the spaces of other sectors of post-education that may not necessarily be uh, in the formal education because the idea of only funneling young people into formal education uh, post-matric presents a challenge insofar as what the NDP and the, um, the goals that are set by the NDP, particularly around job creation when it says of the 11 million jobs that shall be created by uh, 2080, 9 million of those will come from small to medium enterprises. So already you've got an indication that uh, if you are to meet that target, which is about seven years away, you've got to be deliberate about channeling a significant amount of young people towards um, businesses and entrepreneurial side of, um, of life, more than just the formal education. So I do believe that uh, Honourable members, uh, broadly speaking, we take some of the concerns that were raised by honorable members and we appreciate uh, them taking time to listen to us and engaging with us and uh, giving us some of the issues. I mean, I, we were taking notes. We will indeed follow up to, uh, on some of the issues where that fall within our mandate. And it's important for us to play advocacy role where we can and where resources allow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ndlela. I'll now request uh, the CEO just to make his responses before we hand back to the honorable members. Thank you, CEO. Uh, thanks, Chairperson, and thank Chairperson of the committee as well. Um, I just wanted to respond to some of the specific questions around achievement of targets and impact and things like that. So I hear what the honorable MPT says about lower levels of activity in more rural-based provinces. And I think it's something that we have picked up in our work as well, right? Is that you obviously see to a large extent more placements and jobs on national youth service in areas where there's more economic activity. But we are penetrating areas of the country where there is very little economic activity. We, we do have placements in provinces like the Northern Cape and in the Northwest, uh, where there is lower levels of economic activity. What we've realized is it's not just a case of increasing the number of placements. For example, on your National Youth Service Program, where you work with community-based organizations, you work with large not-for-profit organizations, you find that they themselves don't have presence in those kind of communities. And I thought Ms. Pillay captured it well when she said that part of our work beyond just facilitating the placement of young people is to build the capacity of these organizations so that they do have more geographical spread. We take these elements on board in order for us to then indicate what the current performance is and to showcase increased performance in the future. So very much so we have realized that we have challenges, but I think in the forthcoming quarter, quarter number four, as well as in the new year placements of the National Youth Service, we will start to see increases in the more rural based provinces because we have detected more at the core of what the challenge is. 
um, for the for the problem. In respect of market linkages, I know Audible Linkage has been um, on this issue for a long time, and we have presented in a number of presentations the work we've done around market linkage. For example, we have shown what we've done working with the South African Bureau of Standards, where you have young people who are engaged in manufacturing items, for example, but there was a gap in that they could not get those items accredited for uh, purchase in the retail market. So they were very much selling in a rural-based market or in an informal market. And through the SABS voucher that we put in place, we've assisted a number of young entrepreneurs in getting their products accredited technically so that they are able to find themselves on the shelves of ShopRite and Unilever and, and many other establishments. Similarly, we've done projects, for example, with Yoko, whereby by giving young people access to uh, uh, payment solutions for their businesses, we've deepened access to market opportunities. In Limpopo, we're working with the Sishen I and O companies, whereby their preferential procurement they are able to provide access to market opportunities for young entrepreneurs funded by the NYD, similarly with Anglo American in the Northwest. So we do take that feedback on board and we are continuously working on a number of solutions around the market linkages program, which we'll continue to present to the committee in forthcoming um, sessions. In the National Youth Service, I want to respectfully disagree that the National Youth Service has been a failure. We can't say that South Africa currently has the largest national youth service program on the continent, one of the largest ones in the world, yeah, where the monitoring and evaluation suggests the heavy impact that that is having on young people participating in the program. We were able to show actual transitions out of national youth service into long-term sustainable opportunities for young people. Yeah. We've taken that program from zero to 50,000 in a very short space of time yeah? and have delivered on the commitments that was expected of us from government, yeah? showing impact deep into communities in South Africa where young people are doing meaningful work. Now, I understand the conversation around youth service might be broader than just the NYT. And yes, we have a number of youth service programs which are operating around the country. right? And that's why as part of our coordination role, we put together the National Youth Service Steering Committee, whereby we are on an ongoing basis able to hear what different government departments are, are doing around National Youth Service and how we can actively help them to reform their National Youth Service program so that they are actually impactful to young people. One example of this is, for example, an expanded public works program, which has the National Youth Service component attached to it. And we've assisted the department in recrafting the policy around EBWP National Youth Service so that it's better aligned, able to scale, and able to facilitate proper transitions for young people in the medium to longer term. Yeah? If we talk about sectors, I hear, the, I hear the issue around mining, but we can't say that mining is a sunset industry in South Africa when we are in the largest commodity boom post the global financial crisis. In fact, South Africa has so much excess commodities at the moment that we're not able to export it fast enough, mainly because we've got challenges with our rail network and the ports. So they are certainly, and we certainly see a number of opportunities around mining, particularly for those commodities that are also required for renewable energy. Yeah. With that being said, we also hear the issue that we should be, um, we should be participating in industries that are growing. as well. That is why we are training young people for jobs in digital skills. We're training young people for jobs in the gig economy. And in the last sitting of the portfolio committee, we put forward, a, we put forward how we're working on three large scale cannabis projects, one with the agri CETA, one with the small enterprise development agency, and one with the Ingwe TVET college. Now, if one looks at all of these projects, it's not that we want to come and we hear what the committee has said about cannabis, but we, we see these projects as medium to long-term investments. So we want to invest in sustainable-based opportunities where young people have quality of training to participate in the cannabis industry, where these projects have proper access to licenses and resources. But most important, where there is access to market opportunities, where young people have 
a, a market to be able to sell the products that they produce. So of course, on an ongoing basis, we will keep giving feedback on these cannabis products. To the last point about, from Honorable MPP, that institutionally the organization needs to change. I want to express a different view, right? It's to say that government has given the NYDA a clear marching order. It's to say, here's NYDA, we want you to be responsible for youth entrepreneurship, the revitalization of the National Youth Service, and to support the Department of Employment and Labor in the facilita facilitation of jobs for young people in the country. Beyond that, we play a larger role in coordinating. This view has been expressed a number of times from the presidency, from the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with Disabilities. And of course, we all form part of that family in the presidency. Now, on all of our products and services, whether it be training for youth businesses, whether it be the grant program for young people, whether it be the National Youth Service, we are oversubscribed on every single program. That means there is a demand from young people, people wanting to access the products and services. <laughs> I mam kaule ya all of what. Sorry, I'm challenged with my life. I mam kaule again. We are missing Jeva no CEO. We 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 NYTA. Kalungo na palatenge komi na lagnen. All right, mam kaule. This is the CEO of NYTA. Thanks, Chair. So it is currently. We are oversubscribed on every single one of our products and services. That means young people have a demand for the services that we're offering. They want to participate in our program. I would argue that NYD doesn't have an institutional problem. It has an, a problem of funding. One, we have an unfunded mandate. We're expected to cater to 16% of the population and we get 1% of the national budget. Yeah? With that being said, we don't sit and complain about this. We actively go out and source additional funding from a number of sources yeah? um, to be able to expand our service offerings to young people. But there needs to be broader accountability beyond just the NYD. For example, there is a huge mandate of skills development allocated to the Department of Higher Education and Training, which they need to be held accountable for. Yeah? And that is why broadly the youth employment intervention looks at four core departments, employment and labor, small business development, higher education and training, as well as women, youth and persons with disabilities in the implementation. And I think broadly accountability for youth development needs to lie in those four departments, at least for youth unemployment. Yeah. Um, and then on also dialogues versus impact, right? If you look at the way the NYDA budget is structured, it is very much the large scale of our budget goes towards actual delivery of products and services, grants, and stipends paid to young people. Very little actually goes to, to workshops. But you can't, you can't continue to just provide services without communicating the work that you do. And again, I think dialogue is an important platform, right? Because when we talk to young people, beyond just the challenge of unemployment, young people are far more frustrated with the fact that they don't feel their voices are being heard in this country. And it is important. Dialogues, while they shouldn't become talk shops, are important formats for engaging young people and actively including their voices in the design of programs on an ongoing basis. Um, then to respond to Honorable Ngobo's question around disability, I think when we presented the work of quarter two and quarter three, we're now able to show portfolio committee members per program, how many young people we are actively training on disability, right? If you look at our National Youth Service Program, it is the only program in the employment stimulus which is performing at a rate of 8% placements of persons with disabilities. Most other departments and entities are performing at two to 3%. We have the highest percentage of youth with disabilities in our national service. All our branches are disability friendly. We are actively working with organizations in the blind, the deaf, um, and many other spaces to craft memorandums of agreement so we can support their work and leverage off the existing base they have. We've recently concluded an agreement with the public sector CETA um, to, for the training program of exclusively 50 disabled youth in KwaZulu-Natal. I know how passionate on the 
Building Global, is about that program. So I'll make sure to, to invite him when we do open up that program for youth with disabilities. Lastly, I know the question around rural has been responded to, but I also wanted to make one point is that when we hosted the Nelson Mandela Dialogue, we were very deliberate about the fact that we would take it to an area that is not often. Most of these international conferences, conferences in general, we know are hosted in Gauteng or the Western Cape or KwaZulu Natal. We were very adamant about the fact that it had to go to an area and particularly because it was structured around higher education, that it had to go to an historically disadvantaged institution. And I must say that the board has been adamant around that fact about deepening rural access. But I also think we need to envisage rural access beyond just physical spaces. Right? The digital world is here, right? And we need to, we need to, NYD will never be able to be present in every single corner of the country. But we need to leverage off existing infrastructure that is already there, two song centers, local libraries, municipalities, and allow young people to have access to a wide range of services in person, online, as well as over the phone. Um, thank you very much, Chair Output. Uh, thank you very much, CEO, and thank you to all the board members that have provided responses. We'll hand over briefly to Dr. Benice. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, greetings to you and honorable members. Greetings to the Deputy Minister, board members of the NYDA, and all colleagues. There are two issues which were raised um, during the discussion by Honorable Mbiti. I think the first one is on participation in the CSW. Um, <clears throat> that has been clarified by the NYDA chairperson. Uh, she specified that the NYDA was invited to participate, but were unable to participate as a result of the Nelson Mandela Youth Dialogue. And without any doubt, if the NYDA was in attendance, they were going to be the ones to be given the opportunity to deliver the statement. <clears throat> the department has to do that in the absence of the NYDA. And then um, the second issue chairperson, which was raised, it was um, the issue of the relationship between the department and the National Youth Development Agency. And, um, what I would like to indicate uh, in that regard is the fact that the relationship which currently exists is a complementary relationship between the department and the National Youth Development Agency. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members are aware that the National Youth Development Agency reports to the minister uh, as the minister in the presidency for women, youth and persons with disabilities. Uh, on the basis that the minister is the executing authority for the National Youth Development Agency and the shareholder. And um, I would, I, I think the honorable members will recall that on the 4th of November, 2020, we were requested to come to the portfolio committee to present on the relationship between the department and the National Youth Development Agency. And that presentation has since been made where we indicated how we are working jointly with the uh, NYDA to advance um, uh, empowerment of young people. And we have also offered in the previous meetings where this issue of um, competition or lack of clarity of role between the two parties was raised, the department offered to come again to the portfolio committee and make a detailed presentation. But then um, what I can just say is that um, we have collaborated with the NYDA on numerous projects and um, there's no way where the department has actually claimed any victories by the NYDA, 
but um, we have illustrated how we work jointly together. For an example, in the development of the national youth policy, the NYDA formed part of the task team uh, and that uh, project was led by the department. We have even um, amended the NYDA bill, which has since been tabled in parliament and the NYDA was also part of the task team. So these, were, these are just two of the projects that I can cite, but then whatever the department is doing, most, all, most of the time, we make sure that uh, the NYDA is actually part of the process and we support each other in that regard. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Dr. Penis, for the responses given. We will now hand over to the DM, a honorable Dolashe to give any remarks should she wish to over to you DM. Thank you very much honorable chairperson of this meeting. Let me start by appreciating honorable members uh, the presentation that was done by both the CEO, the board itself and uh, the shareholder which is the department. But in the center of that, Honorable Chairperson, I appreciate the contribution that has been done by honorable members, whom consistently are asking a profound questions that really need our attention. For me, Chair, some of the questions which are very important and fundamental on what we said we want to achieve are not questions that need a cut and dry kind of, of an answer but they need a more consideration by all of us to say, how are we going to together address the issue of our youth uh, in South Africa, which we all know and aware of what they were going through at the present moment. I think for me, that anxiety will forever sit with the members and they will ask these profound questions both from the knowledge that they have, but also chair from the experience because honorable members are between the people all the time and they do experience this. And where sometimes we go doing very well, they don't really hear us speaking uh, louder about this and where we have limitations in there, maybe sometimes we don't give more clarity on why limitations and how best are we going to resolve those? Hence, I'm saying they are not questions that really need a uh, cut and dry. Yes, the board, the CEO, and the shareholder have tried to give uh, answers into the questions that really need that. But for me, we need to go back and ponder even more to say our bigger uh, agenda of addressing the issues that really are haunting our youth are not issues, it's not a situation that we can have all answers here and now but it needs an ongoing kind of interaction where we listen to honorable members compare notes with what we have said we are going to do and further improve and sometimes honorable chairperson when we have submitted some uh, answers verbally like we are doing today we can also uh, give more information that will follow honorable members that really puts them into a more clearer understanding on what we are doing. On our rural uh, uh, visibility, it is a, a problem. It will remain one because the country is more rural and the, the rural people really don't have all these sophisticated uh, 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 means of communication, which then means that our uh, coordination and partnerships that the CEO articulated on should be strengthened so that once we are not going to do everything, but we must know and coordinate people who are part of us as partners and embrace more people who are strategic in our work that we're doing on a daily basis. And for that reason, Honorable Chair, I would welcome all the questions and inputs that have been made by honorable members and say, we'll go back as shareholders and work with the NYDA as always do and bring more information and seek more advices uh, from honorable members as per their experiences, but stick on to the mandate that we have in making sure that we deliver according to our, our responsibility. Thank you so much, honorable chair, by allowing us to present today. 
thank you so much by allowing me to speak. These are my members, and I'm very happy to work with you guys, honorable members. And we commit to say we are there at your service all the time because you are doing your constitutional responsibility to play an oversight over us. And that is what should be the order of the day. I'm sure the minister will be happy where she is to get to hear that we have done this good work. However, a lot needs to be done. Thank you so much, Honorable Member uh, Chair and Honorable Members, the, the executive from the department, the CEO and his board members, your staff. Thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Thank you. The Abule Lagakulu, Honorable DM, and uh, in in thanking you, I think we are also passing our words words of appreciation to the entire departmental uh, team uh, together with the minister. We must also appreciate the honourable members in your interaction with the presentations that we have received today from the board members. Let us also appreciate uh, the board members themselves, led by the executive chairperson as well as the deputy chairperson, uh, the two women at the helm of uh, this ship. We greatly appreciate the work that you have done on um, board members, all of you, uh, as individuals and as a collective. We do encourage that you continue to steer the ship on behalf of young people of South Africa. They need you and they need you as well to work in unison together to achieve the intended purpose of why uh, this committee has appointed you through the processes obviously that we have run. Um, a lot of you came before this portfolio committee and presented yourselves for interviews. You had brilliant ideas that you wanted to implement and the visionary, you know, uh, responses that you had given, we still want you to work towards those and ensure that the lives of the young people of South Africa will improve with you being in the NYDA. I appreciate the CEO and the entire team in the offices of the NYDA across the country. Uh, you must encourage your team to always do good uh, CEO they need to be visible, they need to be present. Abu Mam Kaula have noted that there are areas where the NYDA still needs to reach. I know that where I come from in uh, Umzimkul, we also wish that one day in the near future we'll have an a a NYDA office so the young people will not need to spend money that they don't have because they are not working to take taxis and buses and travel to other cities to get the services of the NYDA. In those words, we must appreciate everybody for attending this meeting. We thank you for your productive uh, contributions. And we hope that oh, as we move forward. Please. please. From Iguma University, Nasemparatin, in Dabagutin, and the Uti Zitagamis, go by Abandaba Ning, Manja Bakulang and Kondo because of Tagamis, and it all lang in Pendul. Gabala Ulindo Wood, Lalang, Gabala Ulindo Wood, a long it a Ukuba Zil, Ukoka Yuti, Agatolu Sis, and Tolagalanga, La Pengazanga Tishabagaloto, Abam, we are declined. Basically, mm -hmm. eh, 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 no man has a zoom near a impendulo, um, um, tonish a log. Bess a go by Lena, Gaga, Kigas, Layama, Yama, University, or my colleges. I have Vuliwe, Avala, and Joe Masson and King Aingane as Telemakang and Wood, as it to Langi Colobezi twelve. 
Ugoti bona nge yu genge genge NYTA. Yina ba yenza ino mabazo kense ya nga uguti. Lende yenza ganjalo nge minyaga yenze. Babuye le peku high education ba yota akuvule la ma college. Abandu abebe kwa zugu inga nza bozu uoke ziyewe college. Zofu nde tisha butisha mnesi ingi zibuye zula lekaya. Ile oko je ngufunu kwa zudu. Ngwa bagu chombile la ngufunu batu shwampi 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 la. Na ngufuna <laughs> indo eko ndile. Na lena geya lo munto kuba zile ngitimina. Kate ngba lisa la naezole bekala. Uta ba nagi iwe. Koto kwa atu wa ba vula ma NPO. Abenzi uta ba nagi iwe mundu. Ndiya bonga. Ndiya bonga kakulu ma. Ndiya kabangu kuto kunye uma ma asekbalile. Sizo gwenza in partnership. Mklaombe with i, 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 amanye ama government departments. For instance, i issue ma mkaula ye substance abuse. We would encourage I, I, NYDA, especially in tertiary institutions. Because you would find uguti eskatines ningi. Banga be inga nesezi no ma abandabasha sebe se university. Bazo taiselo lezi itagamizwa ba itate ba zile ba kule nga makandi mental health ba pinde futi ba 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 nga psa kwa zuguti ba kubege skolen. Inki nga geleye kona and we wish the NYTA would, would, would really engage in more programs around the issue of mental health, the issue of substance abuse in tertiary institutions. Kwa tanjengo bangisho maguto gunyege Sebe yoti nguguti bagwenze. Beba ambisene na manya ma government departments. For instance, Department of Social Development does have a dedicated unit on substance abuse. They've got a funding that they have and they hand over or they, they grant ama non-profit organizations or civil society organizations to do work around the awareness of uh, substance abuse. So we encourage ENYDA to embark on uh, those partnered programs with other government departments that will target and other civil society organizations that will do that. In terms of issue, I say, I know that as a portfolio committee, and I think Umpago, that we must also, when we request for a meeting, because we've had AMA meetings with the Department of Higher Education around um, AMA, AMA, AMA issues of e- 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 equality or gender e- inequality in the, e- e- in the tertiary institution spaces when we are speaking about the transformation of higher education. So some of the things that we need to look into is lezo or show you good him slam manga slang and we speak about the issues of the reopening of our colleges that have been closed. But also now, because leyo into a follow within the due restriction in higher education, but also because it it it, it caters a, a lot for 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 abandabasha or young people. Then the NYDA must be able to champion. Such because the says manga basic vula e colo macalunia abandaba ningi cola by toli because sex when they were my universities, nasemative at colleges and all of that. But it's something that Tina is a portfolio committee, manga best lang in no higher education that we need to do. Maybe we can even take a resolution around that matter and then we engage the portfolio committee for higher education. A issue gaga lindo gusle nale a yes is oteluguti. Uh, through you, chairperson, that uh, 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 because it's a uh, it's cases from uh, the province of KwaZulu Natal. He looks into that uh, together with the team. CEO will also direct who is it that we can speak to, so that we can ensure that we are able to do referrals where we need to uh, do referrals, and also assist where we need to assist those young people that Umam Kaula has noted. Uh, with those words, honorable members, uh, yes. because of this English overseas, go China, Masa, I feel like to umzala for nine boys. You want to put them for Nabaschel, but Joba will report. Matini, why Bengalu no government? But a guy, a good thing, and a fund, a fund, a business, or Shalemakai, message, Alaband, Bangapan, Gabonga, and Osasana, I am them shopper, a second deal. Next time, my 
Yes. Okay. Uh, honorable members, we, we really must close this meeting now. Thank you very much. Uh, and I've uh, really appreciated everybody who is here. With those words, we'd like to adjourn the meeting uh, until we reconvene. Uh, when we have uh, um, received gay from the from from the team of 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 um, the portfolio committee abo abo neliswa when the next meeting is we just really request um, a, a, a chairperson and deputy chairperson that the issues that have been raised are attended to so that we are able to ensure that uh, Umam Kaula is sorted in relation to the issues that she has raised around the individual young people that are facing AMA challenges. So, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, honorable members, and everybody on the platform. The meeting is officially closed. Good afternoon. <laughs>